Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Thomas Dopaziola. Welcome back to the Dope As Usual podcast. I am with Marty O'Neill. What's up? What up? Marty's sweater is super dope. I just want to point that out. <laughs> what's up, guys? How you doing? This is the Dope As Usual podcast. We're here to talk about life, problems, drugs, accomplishments, and everything in between. Today's guest is someone you have been asking since the time we said, hey, we're going to start a podcast. <laughs> uh, this is the Josh Kessman, Kessman episode. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, I'm fucking honored. Thank you for hanging out with me. And it's the first time I've ever said your last name. Yeah, I know. It's all right. That was weird. I've never <laughs> said your last name to anybody. <laughs> yeah. How you been, man? Thank you for coming. Thank you for being here. Thank you for taking the time. I know you're not here for a very long time, so thank no, you. No, but this was so important to me, man. I want to support you more than anything. I can't believe that this is it. This is fucking amazing. Thank you. And it's I'll try weird, to stop no. cursing so much. My daughter's going to yell at me. But yeah, no, it's, it's just, okay. This is awesome. Thank you, man. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah. Real quick, I want to start this off by saying the way I look at it is you could essentially call yourself like a Willy, the Willy Wonka of rolling papers, the Willy Wonka of fun. Yeah. You are the key holder to what everyone else sees, what everyone else gets to get exposed to. You know what I'm saying? So when I see your videos, yeah. I see you doing everything. It's like you're going to get a peek, the BTS of the stuff that's coming out soon, or you yeah. get the, the story behind what's coming out soon. You know, but before we get straight into raw yeah. question, where did you grow up? We've talked, we, I've known you for what? Eight, nine years. More probably. than that, I think, man. Right? Yeah, more than that. I was a child when I met you. <laughs> I was a little kid. I just, just started drinking legally when I met you. So, where did you, I've asked you before, I know where you grew up, for our audience, where did you grow up? I started off, I grew up in Manhattan, um, and from there we moved out to Long Island for a little bit, and then I came back to the city, because I got thrown out of high school in Long Island, yeah, and then I came back to the city to finish up high school at this kind of really cool high school for derelicts, and I finished. I got, high school for derelicts? What's that mean? High school for derelicts, you know, bad people like me, a bunch of smokers. Oh, you were yeah, the yeah. outcast. <laughs> we call that here, uh, what is it called? Uh Continuation school. Yeah, that kind of thing. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> so what did you, were your parents pissed? Oh, fuck yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what, what did, I've never asked, what did your parents do? Like, what was your upbringing? What was it like? It was, it was, it was um, completely mixed. So like, I had a dad who was a serious worker, man, like a workaholic all the time, nonstop. Like full work ethic, everything like that would come from him. To the point of like, he was just mostly gone working. And then my mom is, she's an addict, you know, and she, and she has been. And when I was a little kid, she tried to kill herself in front of me. And then, which was terrible but there were some incredible things that came out of that it gave me another mother um an incredible person named linda patrick who raised me from the time i was about i guess about five until i was about 14 somewhere around that like i can't remember the exact years right about that family friend or something no 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 um she was from trinidad and she started off just they needed someone to take care of my sister and i because my mother wouldn't let my grandparents fully take us under custody and all that kind of stuff so linda came into the house and just came like my mom and Linda raised me in a different way that I would have been if that hadn't happened. Like when you hear me laughing and doing all this crazy shit, that's all Linda. Mm -hmm. Linda, you could, anything could happen and she's going to laugh about it, you know? So, yeah, so bad things are, the point of that one is that bad things turn into good things if you look at it that way. Perspective. Yeah. Wow, I didn't know, uh, well, so did you, were you raised on like, other cultures food then is what i'm oh what yeah I'm she would oh my god oh because you. oh you're god. the one that told yeah, me yeah. About ethiopian food and like i don't know about that and <laughs> then you're telling me all these things and now yeah, I yeah. To try it right this is trinidadian food it's different but it's um yeah it just it changes again you get lucky sometimes it's lucky you got to look at it that way and it ends up increasing your breadth of understanding of human beings next thing you know it just makes you a different person and hopefully in a really cool better way that's the goal for everything yeah. i think every experience is if you're worse it's not working you know what I mean? If you're yeah. not bettering yourself, I think every day, it's a stagnant life. Yeah. Not fun. Yeah, and you got to, and it's all, again, it's that way you look at it, though. If you got to, I try to make myself, of course I fuck up, but you try to make yourself look at, okay, what's the benefit in this? Mm -hmm. Like if something terrible happens, I miss my flight. Well, you know, actually what, what actually might have been happening there is when I was on my way to the airport for that earlier flight, I was going to get hit by a runaway fucking truck and crushed to death, and this just saved my life. Mm -hmm. Oh, how lucky I am that I missed that flight. Holy shit. It's the only way to look at it. <laughs> yeah. I used to be pissed all the time. Um, question. Why did you get kicked out of school? Um, the last straw was I got caught smoking pot in the dean's bathroom. 
In the bathroom? His bathroom. I don't, his own bathroom? His private bathroom, yeah. In his office? No, he had, he had left a key in there. And oh. my friend Andy Kaplan took the key and went, ran, we both, I think we did it together, ran to a store and got the key copied and then came back. So we have a, we have a key to our own bathroom. We thought that was so cool. Okay, and Andy cool. tells me to meet him. And there's, this isn't me. Andy tells me to meet him one time and bust out this fucking giant, like, I don't know, the two foot bong. Let's smoke. Yeah, that was, so that was the end of me. In that school. He brought a bong to school? Yeah, in a trench coat. And then into the dean's <laughs> office? Into the dean's bathroom. Or into the bathroom? Yeah. Who I caught you? it out. The dean. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. I thought it was going to be like a janitor or something. <laughs> no, someone smelled it and cut hold of it and they came in there. Of course. You're smoking yeah. a fucking bong. It's going to stink. Yeah. Josh, I didn't know that you were this kid when you were younger. Oh, yeah. I, ran, I, ro- I rode my motorcycle through the hallway with the helmet on thinking they wouldn't know it was me because I took the plate off. They knew it was fucking me. You don't like you with the motorcycle and shit. <laughs> like, oh, that's Josh. <laughs> So you didn't get kicked off with the motorcycle? Did no, the motorcycle, the they weed? couldn't quite prove with me. They knew it was oh, me. Oh, so it did work. Yeah, it worked, sort of. They knew it was me, though. You know, they fucking knew it was me. What, did, get, you, what did you get out of that? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> what did you get out of, like, fuck yeah! I did it! I did it! That okay. was the cool thing. I fucking did it! That was oh, the only cool thing. Okay, hold on. I think it's been five minutes. Let's, 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 we can light this. Okay. Let's light this up. I know everybody's like, how is this not not smoking so that right there og uses in his car and it's really fucking funny that it works so well yeah it does it's really funny for everyone out there can you tell them what the hell that is yeah this is the catcher and it has a, this is the new version with the rubber clamps up here so it's more flexible. smarter because yeah. our joints were too fat right the original one yeah. i noticed that i get feedback from everybody mm-hmm. i realize oh can make it better that was v1 actually on that first one it said on the box because i knew it wasn't right i wrote on there prototipo like there was a prototype because i knew that it wasn't going to be perfect at all but it was as good as I could get it without and more feedback. So we put that one out. I got a bunch of feedback and then we made V2. You're one of the only people I know that asked me for feedback and then yeah. I see it change. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to ask me for so much feedback on certain products. I'm like, Oh, it burned a little fast or this one doesn't work our joints. And that was our thing. Like our joints don't fit. Yeah. Cause OG rolls, you know, OG yeah, I know. smokes those. <laughs> so we kind of can't use that. So what were you doing? Cause there's a story for everyone out there. There's a story behind every single product. Every what were you doing? When this you one thought, was. I need a fucking ashtray <laughs> attached to my joint. No, it wasn't that. It was passing the um, the cone to my beautiful wife every night, and the white sheets. And no matter how I passed it, I would ash. I'd be like grinding off the ash. Okay, take the hit, get a lit. Good, good, good. Here you go. Take a hit, honey. Give it back to me. Oh. Fucking ash on the thing. And guess who gets blamed? Me. Yeah. It was like it became an impossible task to keep the ash off that damn white sheet. Yeah. It was not possible. So uh, I started thinking about inventions. It was like, okay, I need like a fucking bib. I'm going to hand it to her on a tray, all these different things. So finally it was, I realized I needed to make essentially this. And at first we made them out of metal. We like bent metal and cut it and tried it and it worked. So I kept making better ones and different ones and bowling it and stuff. And then it would, I would found little problems with it and you just keep evolving it. And again, I can keep rambling all day and I'm going to try not to do that. Eventually it gets to a point where you turn it into a product. You find a problem, you realize that you're the one to solve the problem. You got a solution. Now let's fucking do it. And then we pull it off. You're 24 seven though. Yeah. I mean, how many products you said you have 500? At least 500 raw ones alone. Jesus. So real quick, I'll, I'll hop right into this. You were getting kicked out of school. You were getting in trouble. For everyone out there looking at you now, inspired as hell. Yeah. What was the first job you ever had? Hmm. First job I ever had was a stock boy at a pharmacy. I nice. hated being a stock boy, man. I fucking hated that job. All right, so I got thrown off a, a teen tour. My parent, my dad put me on a teen tour. What's that mean? I got a bunch of kids get together and they stick you on a Greyhound bus and you go camping and stop at places. Yeah, I know. I wasn't into doing it, but I was like, you know, I, I don't know. You went. Yeah, I you had to. You got to have to go. I, must, I don't know. I was really young. And I got, I got kicked off for having something I shouldn't have had with me on the tour. Mm. And that was me getting booed off. The, so come back. That, you got to pay me back for that teen tour. You're getting a job. And so I got a job at the pharmacy making three dollars and 14 cents an hour Damn. so you sit there working for three dollars and 14 cents an hour and the good thing about all of this i learned a lot right first of all i learned how much i hated uh, like the, when the big truck would pull in and oh you're to unload the, uh, sorry no one else showed up unload the truck today yourself all these fucking diapers 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 for three dollars and 14 cents and i'm sitting there thinking to myself as this is going on wow i would gladly pay someone else three dollars and 14 cents to do this for me man this really sucks i'm selling hours of my life for three dollars and 14 cents my friends are all over the beach right now smoking hanging out having fun i'm sitting down here offloading this truck for three dollars and 14 cents i really don't like this at all and i started looking at it as hours of my life that i was selling and how much would you sell an hour of your life for how much is that how much would you pay later on to get that hour back 
It's a fucked up mm. way to look at things, man. It's, gonna, it's not a good path to happiness, but there is some good that comes of it. But I started looking at it like that. As I was working that whole summer there, I never quit the job. I, I just, it changed my mentality about things and realizing I only had so many hours to sell and I was selling them way too cheap, way too cheap. Never thought about it like that. When I realized is when I worked at McDonald's and I'm like, wait, I'm getting like $7 an hour. When I put five in on a blunt, it's more than half an hour of my dime. That's when I went, no, no, no. I got to do something else. Yeah, it's it's a until you figure it out, you're stuck. You know, your your brain will stay like, no, it's three dollars now. I'm gonna do four hundred hours in the next three months, and it just you can't get nowhere that way. I mean, you can if you have multiple jobs. If you have multiple jobs, it's still it's still hours of your life. It's not worth it, but it's life. I we think. have to do it. Mm-hmm. We do have to do it. It's just if you look at it as hours of your life, I feel like you increase the like you you know you're no longer willing to give it away as cheap. Mm-hmm. And if you're not willing to give it away as cheap and no one will pay you what those hours are truly worth, then maybe step three, right? Maybe you find some way to make it worth it. So either you're doing something you fucking love, therefore you're not looking at it that way anymore. Because like, you know, I'll spend hours and hours and hours doing something I fucking love. I'm not looking at it like I'm selling hours of my life to mm-hmm. that or dedicating hours of my life to that. I'm enjoying every moment of it, you know? It's, um, so there's that or you switch to doing your own thing in such a way that you're making so much money and doing so well in what you're doing that again, you don't mind doing it at all. It's worth it, man. Mm-hmm. You know, so one of those fucking lawyers that sells hours of his life for $10,000 an hour, that kind of shit, you know what I mean? One of those kind of things, fine. But if you love what you're doing the way I prefer to do it, if you really love what you're doing, you won't look at it the way I looked at it when I was selling hours of my life being the stock boy. Yeah. I'll, I'll film for 12 hours a day sometimes and go, it was great. It was great. You great don't miss day. it. You, wouldn't, you don't want any of that time back. No way. Like, it's fine. Yeah. Like, maybe we could be more efficient, not tell stories in between. That's in between. <laughs> like, that's what I do, and it'll be three hours later. Like, oh, shit. We got to get out of here. But that's a great way to put it. How, what would you buy? How much would you pay for that hour back later is a fucked up way to think. I know. It's it true. Because there's so many people just went, oh. Fuck. I'm sorry. I want to bring positivity. I want to bring negativity. No, but in a way of like, it hit them. Yeah. Because if you think about it that way, how much is your time worth? Maybe I won't go get that job. Maybe I'll start that business that I wanted to start. That would be ideal. You know? That would be ideal. This is why I really despise large corporations. Because of that? Because of that. Because they they stifle creativity. They stifle entrepreneurial. High rents. I hate that shit. High real estate. I hate that shit. Because you can't, that makes it where you can't do as easily what I did, which is rent out a little store for $450 a fucking month and open up a little shitbox store. When costs go up so much that that store is now four thousand dollars a month to rent, least. then how are you going to do that, man? It's true. It stifles the entrepreneurial spirit, which is part of the human spirit. I think. It's a good way to put it. Yeah, right. That was a good. Yeah. That was a good way to put it. So you did that. The teen stop tour. <laughs> yeah, you had to get the job, yeah. and that was your first job, and that's when you realized job. this is not going to be. I'd rather pay somebody else to do this. Yeah, this sucks. Okay, this so sucks. what was your next job from there? Would you, would you go straight to the business aspect? Yeah. Well, I, I always, even when I was a little kid. All right. I'll go back a little further there. Go for it. So in little, little, I just remember the parents fighting about money so much, like so much, that it inspired me to make a bunch, thinking that it would solve the, the fighting that was going on. As a little kid, you're thinking, oh, my parents are always fighting. If I could just make money, then they wouldn't fight anymore, right? So you think that. You're wrong, but you think it. So I remember like little Josh, like little guy, was on the corner selling flowers at like at the age of seven. Um, selling lemonade every weekend, trying to find some little cute little hustles to make money back in New York. So I remember doing that real clearly. The first job, though, was real job was that. Um, I always, later on, after I realized how much I hated $3.14 an hour, always started finding side hustles to make money. Some of them were completely legit, some were not as legit, but one way or another, there was always a side hustle going on. More jobs, yeah, I used to, I was, um, I, for some reason, I ended up in ice cream a lot. I was scooping ice cream, I worked in a, like a, like an ice cream shop, I worked at haagen I worked at, <laughs> I did, man. There was gelato places, with it, which is like more of a spatula that you kind of whoo, take the stuff mm-hmm. out, and you put it in, and you whoo, whoo, on it, that was great. I worked as a cabana boy once. Yeah, and the fucking little shorts and the whole thing. No yeah. way. <laughs> in New York? In New York. And I, I lived in one of the ec, uh, extra cabanas. They called it the storage cabana. It was an extra little cabana. I was 16. My mom threw me out of the house. So I, went, I needed a place to stay. So I lived in this fucking cabana the for the summer. Yeah, I loved it. 
It was great. For the whole summer? The whole summer. I fucking loved it. I loved it. So rent-free, yeah, parent-free, parent great free. summer. Yeah, great summer. It was Meeting great older summer. ladies like, oh, <laughs> nice. You're, you're nice, Josh. Like, well, thanks for the tip. I know. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a cool summer. It was a cool summer, man. Wow. Okay. So did you go to, oh, question, after you're done with high school, did you go to college? Yeah. Yeah, I did. Oh, you did? Where'd you go? I have a bigger head. Hold on. Respect. Smarty. That's better. All right. So I, w- I would kind of float around schools, you know, because I was in New York. And at first I, c- I wasn't ready to leave New York. So I went to some a college out there called Hofstra. And then what New York will do to you is get to a point when you realize that if you don't leave in this particular window, you're there for the rest of your life. Right. So as it got to be that time between sophomore and junior year, I was still in New York and I realized, oh shit, if I don't transfer out of here right now, I'm just here. And as much as I love New York, it didn't love me as much back then. I didn't have as much to offer New York. I look at New York as like a living, breathing creature. And I didn't have much to offer her. So she didn't really like me being there. So she was kicking the shit out of me. Mm. So what she likes you to do, and I always look at her as a feminine just because of the way that I, that I personalize the city. You know what I mean? Maybe it's because you look at it as your mother or girlfriend or who knows what it is. Just my own personal way of looking at it. I didn't have much to offer her. She wanted me to leave and come back when I was ready. So I did. I left. I transferred down to the University of Florida in Gainesville, which was also great because my dad had gone bankrupt by now and we couldn't afford to stay in college. And down there, because my, I, I was partially raised by my grandparents and I had... Florida residency, which meant I could go to school for $49.11 per credit hour, which is fucking cheap, right? So I just had to get a job to pay for those credit hours, crashed out with friends, all that shit, and managed to get through college. So it kind of, it was a good move. It really worked out. And that's where I eventually graduated from. While I was still in school, I opened up my first little store. In Florida? In Florida, in Gainesville, Florida. Like a smoke shop? Little smoke shop, yeah. Ah, so before we go into the smoke shop, when did you first fall, like, find the pl- like this plant that you would one day just love, love, and just go off of? Thirteen at a bar mitzvah in New York. <laughs> <laughs> Thirteen Raider <laughs> night before the Raider Super Bowl. Yeah, <laughs> really. Yeah. Who was it? I know you know the guy. I don't remember. Name. You don't I don't remember? remember at all. I have no fucking Someone clue. Passed you a joint? I just remember it. It wasn't like that at all. I found something the older kids were playing with, and I found it after they left. And like I made a point of finding it because I could see they're all playing with it. And they were all so excited. So I went over there right as they left and I got it. What was it? I can't tell you, man. It was something awesome. Oh, okay. <laughs> so that's the first time you smoked? That was the first time that I enjoyed something that was awesome. Okay, okay. All right. I like the way you put that. <laughs> very vague way of putting it. Very uh, professional way of putting that. Okay, all right. So 13. 13. 13 ever since. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Wow, okay. Yeah, lesser and then more and then more and then more. <laughs> That's exactly what happened. I was like 13 it's to 16. Drums, I'm like, yeah. I've got no money. Whatever <laughs> yeah. I can. And then after that, like, oh, God. No, it got bad. But you opened your shop at what age? Oh, gosh. I must have been 21, 22 years old. Yeah. All right, so 450 bucks. You opened your shop. My little fuck. It was a shit, shit box. I love that story, though, man. Is it as big as this room? Yeah, same size as this room. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so Same size. you walk in, you're the guy they see at the front. Yeah, because I was living there. That so, yeah. picture? <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, that's you? the picture. Yeah. That's the picture? That's the picture in the store. Man. You have the cutoff shirt. Yeah, the, the cutoff yeah. shirt. I've seen that. That's a good one. So I was a rolling paper collector. I loved rolling papers. So like my dad used to do magic tricks with his when I was a kid, and it made me fall in love with rolling papers. So I was always collecting, always collecting. And when the internet came, I put my collection online, right? And I'm trading with all these collectors in Europe, and I was the only American that had the balls back then. You know what I mean? Just, just say no. Just say no. But yet I put my collection online anyway. So the Europeans loved me because I would send them like rolling papers that I considered to be garbage from America, and they would send me back really cool European shit. So when I opened my store, I kind of next leveled that. And started building a business off of that where like I would send them what again some stuff that wasn't the greatest and they would send me back some really cool European papers and sometimes they had the old stuff um, the, when from when papers were made a different way and they would send me those and I loved those and my customers loved those and the other thing I learned was there was like a going rate for rolling papers in America back then it might have been a buck a pack so it didn't matter what I paid for it as long as I sold it for a buck a pack 
So the Europeans, sometimes I would send them a, they, like the stuff would cost me like 15 cents and I could still charge a buck a pack. And I was like, holy shit, I could actually make some money on rolling paper. This is awesome. And, I'm, and everybody's happy because the paper itself is much better smoking, in my humble opinion. The dude's happier, I'm happier. Everyone's happy except for the big company that isn't making as much money in America who still hates me to this day. But yeah, other than that, everyone was doing great. So that's when I realized that there was a business there. All right, so I had the idea and I recognized it. That's how this started? Yeah. Really? So in the smoke shop, it wasn't just papers. It's all walks of life all smoke walks of life. stuff. Yeah, any, any kind of smoking stuff. I learned all about tobacco. I had any kind of tobacco products. I had fucking everything going on because the goal was really about smoking. It really was. And I, I, lear I learned so much from the people that came in. I built the store around the customer. So the dude would come in. Think, what people make a mistake out in business is they have an idea and they think they're right. Right. Mm -hmm. And then they kind of push their idea out there. What I know is that I don't know shit. Right. So I know I should open the store. But in the end, I need to listen to every person that comes in and let them tell me what I should have in the store or what I should be doing. So every person that would come in, they would say, hey, man, you're opening a great smoke shop. This is awesome. Are you going to carry dugouts, for example? And my answer would be like, yeah, I'll have them within two weeks. What's your favorite one? They would tell me all about it. I'd really have an engaging conversation, learning everything I could about from that person about dugouts. Then they would walk out the door. I'd hit the phones, calling up till I found that particular one they wanted. And if, I, if they, they wanted, I assumed some other people did too, to get a whole box of it, bring it into the store, see what happens. And a person would come back two weeks later, there it was. So the store was really built by the community. And this isn't just about this one store, though. This sort of mentality can be propagated into anything you're doing. If you're really listening to people, it's the same thing you were talking earlier, but you and I were talking, that I listen to every single thing people say. Yes, because I know that I'm wrong. I know that I don't know that much. I know that I'm here to serve people. That's my job, right? Yeah. So the way, best way I can serve you is to, by talking to you and figuring out what your needs are. And sometimes I have to do it without you even telling me, which is harder, but I can do it and figure out, okay, how can I make this better for him? Watching you smoke that, I saw how many times you relit that thing. And my mind, as you were doing it, I was thinking, how can I make that better for him? How can I make it that wouldn't happen? What can I do? What can I do? And I had some ideas. But it's, um, yeah, this is what I do. Yeah. And this is, <laughs> <laughs> this is what you do. So, as, I'm, as I'm watching you light that over and over and over. I'm realizing <laughs> something's wrong. What is it? And how can I fix it? And then I'll come up with ideas of how I can do it. Wow. So this started, <clears throat> your love of papers. Yeah. Started because you saw the market. My pa love of paper started when my dad, growing up in New York, uh, during the holidays, my dad would take his rolling paper, this old Spanish brand called Marfil Arroz, an old Spanish rice paper, which he would light on fire and throw in the air in front of me and all the other kids, and it would vanish. Yeah. And we were like, oh. So that made me realize, like, it, I want to say this, it made me realize, because it's true, that rolling papers are magic. And I still look at them as magic to this day. That was the only magic trick he knew but it blew my fucking mind. And that moment, that was it. So I've been drawn to it from that point. I was probably five. I've been drawn towards rolling papers from there. And it just set me on this journey that we're still on today. Wow. I did not know that. That was fucking awesome. I love that. That's so <laughs> that was awesome. You've done that in front of me. You know that, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah look, look at how this burns. See that black set? That's from my dad. That's different. You've, done, like, you've shown yeah, me this my dad's before. magic trick, man. That really set me on a path for life. That magic trick came back to me years later. I mean, because of my collection, I get called into have a meeting with a man who's looking for, he's reopened what we believe is the oldest rolling paper factory in the world, in Alcoy, Spain, right? It's a region of Spain, and it's where rolling paper, I'm pretty sure, was first ever created, first ever made. And there's nobody left there except now it's my family, but it used to just be him. And he had reopened uh, essentially what was this old factory called Papeleras Reunitas, which was this reunited family of rolling papers from all the little houses that had come together to make one real factory to stand together against the giant factories that had opened elsewhere. And they held their ground for a while until they were destroyed through litigation, which is a whole other story by someone who still dislikes me a lot to this day and sued me too, but that's another story. Um, and I had a meeting with him with the man who had reopened this, who had done this. And he, he sat with me and he was this beautiful old Spanish man. And he's looking at me a whole meeting with his arms crossed like this, sneering at me. Cause I'm sitting there and I'm like, you know, still in my twenties and I'm still me. So he's looking at me like, and he asked me in Spanish and thankfully I know some, um, why do you even care about rolling papers, Josh? And I turned to him and I told him the story of my dad and the Marfil Rose. Mm -hmm. 
And he got so excited and told me, Josh, I made Marfilla Rose. Oh, wow. My Holy father shit. made Marfilla Rose. My grandfather, my great grandfather had all made Marfilla Rose on his wife's side. And it was, he was like, we must do this again. And we decided to bring it back. And the way we brought it back, because even the brands were taken back then, the brand names, we named it Elements after the elements that are used to make this beautiful rice paper. And that's where Elements comes from. And that's, that shows you the connection of the journey. Like one thing leads to another to another. It just goes on. I know that's what you need to elements. And for everyone out there, yes, you yes. make elements. Yes, I made elements for my father. It was his favorite paper and it still is. Wow. What a story. <laughs> that was amazing. Yeah. I feel like I was just in a movie right now. <laughs> you do a good job of that. Sorry, man. That was it's a good storytelling, man. That was no, great. because when I'm you imagine. tell a story, and you know this from being a podcaster, the reason if you allow yourself to, when you tell a story, you relive it. Which 100%. Is, right, which is why old people, See in your which head. I am one of now, um, like to tell stories so much because it gives us the chance to relive that experience. So as I'm telling you about Jose Emilio, I'm sitting there feeling it again, mm -hmm. the way I felt when I'm sitting there across from him. I'm feeling, remembering that look at my, my dad's eye and my, my, my friends, and we looked at each other as the rolling paper went up and shoo, vanished. All that stuff, you get to relive each moment of it when you retell the story. That's true. Every time I tell a story, I'm not even there. I'm just thinking yeah. of every single thing that happened. Right. And I know I'm staring at it from another <laughs> angle. That's how I tell. No, I got so lost right now. So, one, you are the creator of Elements for everyone out there that does not know that. Yes. And Juicy J's also. Yes. Why did you make Juicy J's? That's the flavored, flavored papers. Yes, flavored papers was, there was two reasons. One, you want them to know where the name came from or why we made it? Both. Okay. Name. Well, the name first is because... At one point in time, my dad was making some money and he was like, I love that man. I really do. And he got me a Mustang convertible, right? And I'd, I had to make a little bit of money working. So I put gold rims on it and I was all excited, right? Bomb, bro. <laughs> right, right. We're, we're going like, Spokes? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we're, we're going to like 88 now, like 87, those kind of years, right? That's a long time. I know probably before you were born. It's okay. And there I am in my badass Mustang, right? And then suddenly vanilla ice comes out. And he comes out with a, and with a song and he, a video where he's driving one that looks just like mine. And it's like, oh, God, this sh fucking killed it bad. So it used to be the car, the car was cool for like a couple months until suddenly when I pull up there, I'll be like, yo, you like vanilla, ice. vanilla ice is here. I'd be like, fuck. <laughs> Why did I pick white out of all colors? Fuck. It's a badass car, though. It's a badass car, man. Mm -hmm. It was a 5.0. It was great. Five speed. People, that's that, that people are dying for that car. Yeah, right Fox now. Body. Yeah, it's great. I car. see him so much. Oh, I worked on that thing all the time. I wrenched that bitch. I got fucking. It started off with two hundred twenty-five horsepower. I got up to about two eighty by the time I was done with it. I love that thing, man. I really did. Two eighty was a lot back then, especially with the money I had, which wasn't a lot. So I managed to get with every little trick to get the fucking shit up, adjusting the timing by turning the shit yourself, all that stuff. It was fun. So um, there's this Mustang, right? So one day, me and my friends cut school. And we decide, because we were big fans of LL Cool J, and in his song, he sings, you know, Farmer's Boulevard. That's where I hang out. That's where it's cool at, man, the place to be. We decide we're going to go down Farmer's Boulevard. We're going to find out where LL Cool J hangs out. Oh, shit. Dumbass fucking kids. You know what I mean? How we were you? How were you? 17, I'm thinking. Oh, okay, okay. You can, you can go out there on your own. Yeah. Did you so find we, it? We, no, we're, <laughs> we're cruising down Farmer's Boulevard, stopping at people, stopping people at intersections to ask them, do you know where old Cool J hangs no. out? We are such dumbasses, no. right? Such dumbasses. <laughs> yeah, here's his address. <laughs> Follow me. Yeah, Dude, that was We early. were so dumb, man. We didn't know we were 17. So we pull into the place where everyone hangs out that night. I pull into my Mustang, right? And there comes the usual people making fun of me. Yo, Vanilla Ice is here. They're like, no, no, no. That's not Vanilla Ice. Because everyone had heard now what we had done. Yo, that's not Vanilla Ice. That's Cool J's staying, man. Ask him where he hangs out. Like, okay, cool. So I got this nickname of Cool J from there. Not because I was cool, but because I was a dork. And so that's where the first flavored rolling paper we made was menthol. And I named it Cool J's after that fucking nickname oh I had back God. then. And then the second one I made was watermelon, which I couldn't call Cool J's because it wouldn't make sense. So I named it Juicy J's, like a juicy watermelon you know, to signify the flavors of the paper. And that's where it all came from. This nickname turned into a rolling paper brand. I love that all of these have a story. They all It's do. not just you just putting words going, you know, these mesh. They all come from somewhere. It's like a fucking story time that you smoke. Hey, I'm holding back right <laughs> I like now. It. I will, I, I'll try, I'm going to see if I can do this in a nutshell. The cool thing that happened was because that old factory, Papela de Unitas, had been bankrupted, 
when Jose Emilio started his factory, he was only able to get the old machines, only certain specialized machines that the people coming from other areas to destroy the old factory thought had no value. They, they didn't just want to take the machines, the people that came, they wanted to destroy it. The thing they were told is, let not a seed stand or it will plant and grow, right? They, they were splitting they, machines down the middle to fucking destroy it. They bought it just to destroy, destroy it. it. A competition had been going on for hundreds of years. Oh, hundreds of gotcha, years. Gotcha, gotcha. You're talking like the kind of stuff you watch on HBO of clans fighting with each other. Overrolling papers? Overrolling papers. This had been going on for a long... And it still goes on. It still goes on. There's not, <laughs> the fight this continues. This is our land. <laughs> it's like that, man. What? This is what it's like. It's crazy. But the way they've, people have looked at it, because if you did something that your father did, that your grandfather did, your great grandfather did, your great grandfather did, your great grandfather, mm. if you're carrying a grudge from six generations ago. You know, and your dad taught it. You hate them, right? Oh, you hate might them. like them at we school. We hate them. We hate them. <laughs> we hate them. And oh. that's the way they think about each other. It's it's like a different type of competition. That's the let's go, generational grudge. Generational grudges, man, for real. Oh so my god! So they, just, they wanted to make it where there'd be no more rolling papers made. Not quite ever again. Middle. Yeah, they cut split the machines. machines. These beautiful butterfly machines. They cut them down the center. Yeah, split them to make sure they could would never operate again. Trash them. Nothing, nothing was allowed to be remained. But Jose Emilio knew this was happening, so he he took all his life savings and he bought whatever machines he could get, the ones that weren't claimed yet, and all he got were a bunch of old, awesome machines. And some of those machines could make flavored papers in a way that still I don't think anyone can make flavored papers the way that he could or that now we do. And this is what we had. You, you play with what you got. We, a negative to a positive. Negative to a positive. We had these old these machines can make flavored papers. Cool, let's make flavored papers. There hadn't been demand for them in decades. Let's try it again. Let's make them even better. And Jose was so good at this. He made some incredible flavored papers. I believe that we've made the best flavored rolling papers that have ever existed yet in the history of mankind. That's awesome. Someone else will do it better later on. This is an Alcoy thing. When I was talking about the multi-generational thing, what you come to realize if you spend a lot of time in Alcoy working on paper or anything is that you are just a link in the chain. There's someone who's coming after you, someone who's coming after you, someone who's after him, and after him. So your job is to be the best link in that chain you can be. So during your time of running the show, you run it the best you can, bring it to the highest level it's ever been brought. Maybe you'll be, uh, you'll get the statue in the town square or the, the carvings that you get, some of the people who have gotten in the past. Hopefully I'll get one of those. And then eventually someone else takes over and your time's done. And so you bring it as far as you can bring it knowing that you, you've got it, but someone's probably going to beat you in the future, man. That's okay. You did your job. You were you the best link you were. Yeah, of course. Someone's better out than like, me. Hey, someone can make it better. I know they can. Yeah, they know they can. They definitely can. Especially with the, with the technology. With, with everything, too. It's yeah. with anything. Yeah. Grower, but I hope someone takes it straight and just runs, runs with it. it. Yeah, makes it even better. At yeah. least that's the mentality I would think that people would have. They or should want have. to have, yeah. Yeah, that's human nature because we all get hired together, man. We really do. As, a, as, a, as humanity, we do. If, no, this is my secret, I will hold on to it. It was the same thing with freaking learning how to roll. I came to realize that nobody was teaching people how to roll. And I thought, why is nobody teaching anybody how to roll? What am I missing here? I went on YouTube, went on all the stuff, and I'm looking, and it was mostly people showing off. Look how fast I can roll. I was like, all right, that's cool. Why don't you teach someone how to roll? And I would look at it, and maybe you would, they would teach a few instincts of it, a few little tricks of it. But it wasn't that thing of, hey, can you teach my grandma how to roll? Because if you can t develop a technique and show a technique in a way that my grandma can learn how to roll, then you've done something incredible. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't be a magic Universal. trick that you're holding on to so that you can be the cool guy at the party. Look, I can roll. No, it should be something that's shared among all of us. Because, and tell me if I'm wrong on this one, the ones you roll yourself smoke better. For you. Every single time. Yeah. Because I know exactly how I'm going to hit it. There's little tweaks. Most people don't know that. But in the joint, there are little variations in yeah. every piece that's going to make it smoke different. Right now, I can feel right here. It's drying, so it's getting a little rock hard right here. Yeah. And what's going to happen is going to fall. <laughs> so you got to adjust it slightly, tweak it just a little bit. Massage, cone massage. Cone. Yep. Now, it is a perfect fucking joint. There's a lot of, and I know you know most of all, you're staring at my joint going, uh, <laughs> I know you I know. I already knew all that shit. Yeah, yeah I know you know. <laughs> real quick, real quick. That's Ron. Uh, I just noticed it right now. Before we started, I saw your watch. It is ridiculous, and I love it so much. I'm not into jewelry. I never okay. have been. Yeah, this fucking badass watch. It's so, the only badass thing I wear. Where did you get that? Okay. And how? Because you said, no, save it for the podcast. Save it for the podcast. All right. Here we go. All right. 
good. I'm gonna, okay, guys, I'm going to tell you the long way, but fuck it. You're just going to hang out with me for a while. Yeah, What's the video? Because like, yeah, I, I won't get the chance to hang out with you, so now here's our chance. All right, so here's how it goes. Um, when I was in high school, my best friend George, his dad was a, was a lawyer, and he made real money. And so when we graduated high school, George's dad got him a Rolex with a blue face and, a, and some little gold links, right? And, I, was, and I, I didn't even know that there was such a thing as a nice watch. I had no clue this existed. And then George shows up with this watch. I'm just like, wow, that's beautiful. I didn't know that was a thing. So I asked my dad for a watch. My dad gets me some Seiko that fell off a truck or something. You know what I mean? So that was like a thing that planted in my head. And when I was still in school and doing all my little hustles, the first nice thing I bought myself, I went down to the local pawn shop in Gainesville, Florida, and bought myself a used, beat-up watch just like George's with a black face. So the, that was my first nice thing I ever really bought myself was that Rolex. And I really liked that Rolex because it was mine and I had gotten it myself and all yeah, this shit. You, you know, bought it. It was yeah. mine. I bought it. And later on, all the Rolex guys would pick on it because they could tell it was made with different parts from different shit. Didn't matter. It was mine. I fucking loved it. Um, in 2009 or 10, somewhere around there, I don't remember, I come back to take back over my company, which is a story for another day. But I have to fully take it back over. And I'm down there and everything's cool. But there's a couple of my employees are like, yo, man, your watch is really kind of fucked, dude. You should get that thing rebuilt. I'm like, what do you mean? And the, some guy takes it off. And I didn't know it was a thing with Rolexes, but apparently you take it off and you like hold it like that. And it's supposed to hold itself up. Okay. And mine was like, <laughs> oh, it's drooping. <laughs> yeah, like fully down. Like oh. They're like, dude, you're, it's going to fall off your wrist. You're, it's going to go flying. You're going to lose this thing. You, you got to get it fixed. I'm like, what, is it, what does that mean? You're like, oh, it needs to be this. You send it to Rolex. They'll do it. I send it to Rolex and they give me a quote, like much more than it's worth to fix it. I'm like, fuck, what do I do? And like, oh, and it'll take six months. Oh, I'm like, oh. Okay, so what do I do? Oh, well, there's some old guy you can send it to. It takes him a year to rebuild him. He'll charge you a lot less. Maybe you could you see if he'll work on it. So I speak to the guy. Sure enough, he'll rebuild it at least a year, Josh. Okay, so I'm going to be without my watch. And I'm like, you know what? Maybe it's time to get a new watch. Maybe it's time to get a watch. So I start looking at all the And all I can think of in my mind is that one brand of Rolex because that was the thing I couldn't have as a kid. This happens to us, by the way. The thing you couldn't have is the thing you'll always want, right? So I'm looking at all of them. And they're all these fancy ones. And blah, 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 blah. I don't give a shit about any of them. All I wanted was that once. So I'm like, what do I do? What do I do? There's nothing here I care about. And then um, I think it was Betty sent me this picture of this watch that was for sale. And it was ridiculous. It was this watch. And it was the world's only rock and Rolex. It was made for Lil Wayne. And he had put a deposit on it, but then he got went to jail. So he never picked it up. And the jeweler was trying to sell it desperately. No one would buy it because no one would wear the fucking thing. So I took one look at it and I was just like... I think that's that's ridiculous, but I think that's my fucking watch. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so that's how I ended up with the world's I've only rock and fucking Rolex. Seen anything like it's Little Wayne's watch? It's fucking <laughs> awesome. I know it's ridiculous. The second I saw, because I like I said, we were looking at watch. I'm not into jewelry, but my yeah. friends, I was I was looking at their stuff, and I see why people really like it. It's fucking amazing. The when you look at it, like, oh my god, okay, I get it, I get it. It's just like oh, I put new rims in my car, I'm like. Mm. <laughs> but I, I'll break stuff. I'm, I'm fucking animated and I'll break. Yeah, yeah I'll destroy things too. That's why I'm like, uh, I'll just stay with my joints. <laughs> and I break those too. So I had to ask. It is awesome looking. Yeah. We saw it earlier, but I wanted to say it's still the, story. the only really nice piece of um of jewelry that I own. Everything else is stuff that I make that I love because I make it myself. Yeah, the joint rings. You I just love smoke through it. I love all these rings. By the way, all the rings you can put a joint in and just <laughs> smoke it, Marty. Look at his face. Uh, yeah. Look at his face. This is my newest one. This is my favorite. It's a double yeah. barrel. You put a like joint a, in it. You like can just, a, I can oh, two at one. shit. Just hold okay. it in your hand. Nice. It's fucking awesome, actually. Come, these come in really handy. So every, there's a story behind each piece, right? So this ring, the raw toker's ring, was meant for... I kept getting cup cough in the clubs, man. I uh, kept getting it. And you're passing the cone around everyone. And someone in your circle has a cold and is lying about it. Oh, no, I feel fine. <laughs> Here you go, Josh. Thanks for the cold, bro. Appreciate mm -hmm. it. And I kept getting sick in New York City. And I was tired of it. I was holding it, doing all the weird holding methods through the side. But in the end, I was still getting sick. So I decided to make, a, I wanted a holder that I could like Where? put it in. Yeah, so now whenever I need to, whenever I'm in the clubs, you'll see me. Whenever it's time to smoke, it's always like someone's passing to me. It goes in here. I light the side for a little while first to kind of sterilize it. Then I let it cool down for a moment. And then I smoke through the ring. And I have not gotten cup cough since. Nice. Yeah. So it's always like. Awesome. It's your own personal filter. I do this one. I just go like this. Because I go to cannabis cups. I know it's, it's cannabis cups. 
I just, I, I, it's hard to not be rude when you go, uh, no thanks, man. <laughs> okay, you, know, right. like, you know, you know what I'm saying? That feeling of, uh, no, I hate me. turning them down. Yeah, I hate it. It makes me feel so bad. It's like, hey, you want to hang out? I'm like, <sighs> I'm too good for you. I that's how I feel. Like, oh, dude, yep. I will totally smoke with you. When I, like, oh, I just don't want to get sick. I don't want to get sick. Yeah, please that's really don't give me that cold. I don't want the cold. Please don't give me the cold. But yeah, so that's <laughs> what the rings are for. So now people pass me a sick in here. And it's like, fucking awesome. Yeah. So we, we started touching on it and we stopped. You saw the market. You saw all the people coming in asking for different papers. Your love for papers. Your yeah. dad, the magic trick. You go there. He's starting his new machine. Are you starting his new spot? They, they cut everything down the middle. That was because that's what you start that, Yeah, they destroyed everything. He had already reopened the factory, but he was having a lot of trouble selling because no one appreciated the paper besides, like, there were 10 of us that really actually appreciated this old way of making paper, this old style, which is very rustic compared to a modern rolling paper factory. Mm -hmm. And you have to be more of um, someone who loves paper to appreciate kind this of stuff. Sore. Yeah, you have to be at a real high level. It's like the difference between Charmin and like a craft paper, like on a, on a reel that you open up and has a scroll inside, you know, <laughs> yeah. it's like, you're looking at that kind of difference where it's like, but yet how do you teach people to appreciate this? So we just kind of, we just went with it. And uh, is this how you started raw with him? Yeah. Oh yeah. So he saw you and you saw it as an opportunity, like, oh, I can have my own now. Oh, so we made elements. We made juicy J's. Mm -hmm. But the dream I'd always had was to make my own uh, real rolling paper back when I had my store. Again, it's, everything's connected, man. You still so, had the store while doing this? Oh, no, 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 no. Back when I had the store. Oh, was, gotcha. Or actually, I might have still had the store while some of this was going on, but I don't remember exactly right, man. My, so um, when I was in my store, in the early days of the store, again, people are coming in, tell me what they want. One guy came in and told me, hey, are you going to carry, and he said, a certain brand of natural cigarettes. A very popular brand nowadays. I try not to say certain brands. Mm -hmm. And I was like, sure. Yeah, of course, man. I'll be here in two weeks. What's your favorite one? The whole thing I normally do. Get them in for him. In my mind, because I love paper so much. I know so much about paper. I've studied it now. I really understand a lot about this stuff. I'm picturing, based on him sitting there lecturing me for 10 minutes about how his cigarette is so natural. I'm picturing I'm going to pull it out of the pack. It's going to be this translucent brown natural paper. Of course it's going to be. It has to be. Based on how everything's going to be natural. So he, it comes in, I sell him his pack, he opens it up, he want one, of course, man, I love tobacco, by the way, yeah, it's terrible, but I do. And I, he pulls out a cigarette and hands it to me, and it's a typical bright, white, bleached, freaking full of chalk cigarette. And I'm looking at this thing like, fuck, what the fuck, it just looks like a damn, it could have been a Marlboro, it looks mm -hmm. exactly the same as everything else. And then I realized, I thought about my collection, I thought about the history of rolling papers, and I thought about everything I'd ever learned. And there had never been the type of rolling paper that I was imagining. And then I had to think about, okay, why isn't there? That's a whole nother story. Why has there never been that paper? Oh, that really? That's stupid. It's, it's because when we first made rolling papers, I say we, I mean humanity, it was to, people were smoking out of rolled used newspaper. They were re-rolling cigars that had literally come over from Christopher Columbus days. To, um, to Spain, these old cigars, and they would be open, they would, uh, the aristocrat would smoke it halfway down, and then it would do something called turning, which means it gets over-resonated, and it gets so bad you can't smoke it, they would drop it on the ground, the peasants would come and grab it, open it up, re-roll it in used newspaper, and then hit that, and then hold in the puffs, because each puff was still so precious. It was coming over on wooden sailing ships, in the, you know what I mean, For Columbus type days. Yeah. Now this thing of rolling in newspaper makes its way up to Alcoy, which was the paper-making capital of all of Europe at the time. Another story it has to do with the Moors bringing paper there first. And you know, this, dude, I really, I could keep you here for days. Really, days. And, we, and, and, it, wouldn't <laughs> really, end, days. and, and it wouldn't end. <laughs> I got you. So when the Alcoyanos saw this, they decided to make a bright white bleached paper to show that it was pure, to show that it wasn't used newspaper. They literally marked it as hygienical to say that it was a pure paper and they sold that as cigarette paper. So to this day, whenever you see a bright white paper and wonder why people are using it, it all goes back to Alcoyona's trying to show people that the, the paper they were making for smoking was not used newspaper. Hmm. Yeah, back then, newspaper would have had some extreme heavy metals in it. You wouldn't have wanted to smoke it. Damn, right. hundreds, yeah. of years, hundreds of years. Hundreds of years. Stories. I just got lost again. Yeah. <laughs> I was going down brick cobblestone alleys right now in my head. That's exactly where I was. It is. It's like this, man. Like I try not to. Tell, I, I'm trying to hold myself back because I could tell too much, and I don't like. I could sit here, and you, I, we could tell stories till the end of time, 
and I and, and honestly, I want to because I want the whole world to, to know what I know. I want this information to be shared. I want it to be out there so that we all enjoy it more. When we realize where we come from, it helps us go in a better direction, you know? Mm -hmm. And you recognize where something came from. It just kind of, you know more about it, and therefore you're able to make it better when you make it. You're able to enjoy it more. You laugh about it. When you know the, the story of the invention of this, it makes you enjoy it more, and you get, oh, that's why. Mm -hmm. And then next thing you know, you're saying to me, you know what you should do, Josh? You should, and I'm like, really? Okay, thank you for that. I appreciate it. I'll do that. It's um, it's like that. Yeah. It's the sharing of knowledge we used to do around the smoke circle, telling stories and just sharing information. Now you're at the head of the darn circle, man, and you're sharing information with everyone. And now your circle's getting bigger and bigger. Your whole podcast audience is just, to me, is just one big smoke circle. Mm -hmm. And we're all just hanging out together, sharing freaking stories. That's exactly that's, that's what we've said before. <laughs> that's exactly what it is. No matter what, the camera is you. You're at home just chilling. Yeah, that's the point, That's man. the whole point of this. That's yeah. exactly why we did this. We said, uh -huh. I love Nailed it. it. <laughs> that's why we're friends. That's exactly how, this is why we started this. Because there's some people that are sitting there by themselves going, Oh, now I got someone to chill with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every yeah. week. Yeah, it's just another friend added to your hangout list. Yeah. That's how I feel with Especially us. during the pandemic. Oh, that, it was yeah. the worst. The pandemic was the worst. It was bad for people. So yeah. I was on live every day for hours just trying to like remember names, remember profile pictures, get on people. Because, you know, some people were not having the best time. Mm -hmm. and a lot of people aren't personable. They don't really go out. I can only imagine. Like me in high school when I was a kid. If I was during the pandemic, it would have been the worst thing in my life. Yeah. I would have never talked to anybody in life. Right. And it's just, it's not fun. You meet how many people doing countless meet and I greets. I don't it. know it. I know there's people telling you their story and you're like, well, that was awesome. Yeah. I'm so happy that this made your, your day and your life just by me being here. And, and it, I know you know this because yeah. I've seen you do it. It's so much, it makes everything better worth doing it. It makes your life feel worthwhile. For, like, it gets me high, man. When someone's telling me, oh my God, you changed my life, you saved my life. And I'm like, okay, how? Yeah. And, they, and they actually have something to say mm -hmm. that I'm like, wow. holy shit, that's freaking awesome. I feel so good about myself and I feel so happy, you know? It's just, it, it uplifts, it, it, yes, I'm so glad I helped them. And then they just helped me. And it's fucking beautiful, man. It's it's one of the, that's why they always say cycle. the secret of life, you make other people happy, then you, they'll make you happy. It's true. You bring other people up, you get up too. But that is amazing that you, you I did the same thing as you during the podcast. I thought it was going to be 21 days. So I decided, oh, I'm gonna, I literally went on on the first day. I'm like, it's gonna be okay. I'm gonna share with you 21 different rolling secrets and techniques and, and it's, I'm gonna blow your freaking mind. By the time this is over, you're gonna be a better roller and you're gonna do nice. so many smoking tricks, right? And I taught them funny shit that I was busting out shit from a long time ago, man. I was doing gravity bongs. I was doing freaking the apple pipes. I was bringing like old, old, old shit back every day. Funny stuff, you know what I mean? The waterfall where you punch a hole in the bottom of a water bottle, oh, yeah. thing on top, yeah, <laughs> all the old stuff, one a day, and it was funny. Twenty one days, and then it kept going. That's two over two years. <laughs> I know. Then it kept going. Then I was like, wait, it's, it's getting just hard now. Years. Wait a minute, it was supposed to be twenty one days. There's not, there's not, <laughs> there's not a hundred smoking trips you can get. So <laughs> no, you start running out after a while. Like, wait a minute, and, or there are ones, but they're not as good as the. At the early ones, because I was busting out my fun and stuff. I really had funny. Just really making an apple piper after all those years. My first one I ever made was two years ago. I've never <laughs> made one before. It, was, it actually worked really good. I know. It was kind of it was kind of awesome that I never. I felt stupid for all the times I'm making can pipes as kids. Oh no no! Just no, roasting can's the can worst. pipes. No. Oh, especially melting all that paint. And, yeah. Oh, oh my god. Yeah. You know. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, it was the worst, but. I know we keep gotten off topic. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so you made raw yeah. after all that. You decided I had never seen anything like this, at least. That was the dream in 93, I think. Was That was when the dream came out. That was when I realized I needed to make this. I had no ability. I was a dude with a store. I was happy to be a dude with a store, but that's all I really was. I couldn't go make a rolling paper, but the idea sat with me. So then we made elements, and then we made Juicy J's, and I had, I knew what I actually wanted to make. I developed enough, I don't know what to call it, when people trust you more. Enough credit, whatever it is. Credibility. Right, I credibility. Think, I think it would just yeah. be credibility, yeah. Credibility. I developed enough credibility where I could finally go meet with the mills, the mill owners. These are the guys who make the bulk shit. It's not rolling paper yet. Shit you take it's pictures like, of? Yeah. The yeah. Well, sometimes, not even that. Some of that stuff's already been processed somewhat. I'm talking about like Oh, bulk. yeah, I've only seen the process stuff. I've never I don't seen know. anything else. I'm not sure. We, I'm not sure you FaceTimed me once, and it was like 
that had already been processed. Yeah, that had already been watermarked. Tire. Yeah, those are huge. Yeah, but that, that I think the ones I showed you then had already been through through, through some of the machines. Had to have so. Been. It's um, it's like a, the paper itself is rougher when it's not ready yet. It'll look similar, but it's not. It's not what I would want to sell. It's not. You, even if you tore it open and smoked it, it wouldn't smoke right. Could you light a paper on fire and know what's wrong with it? Could you mm. smoke it, take one puff, and go, "I know what's wrong with this paper." Sometimes yes. Sometimes yes. Um, I I would rather if I'm throwing it in the air, I'd actually have more trouble looking at it. So when you said it to me, if I was like, mm, I'd rather light it and look at it and watch it burn in order to get an idea for what might be wrong with it. I've seen you tell me like, look at this, yeah, look how it's burning, right? This this because this 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 this. this, 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 this. Yeah, explain to you, yeah. That's insane, man. You uh, down 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 to a science. It truly uh, is. Yeah, one hundred percent. This is what you live and breathe. So who else is going to tell you different when you burn yeah. it? You should, I've watched you do it before. Yeah. So what are you looking for? Say you're burning something, and what's the chalk? For everyone out there, here's the PSA, why you shouldn't be smoking anything that's bleached. Well, it's okay. I can't tell them not to do anything. Well, if you said a healthier alternative would be to smoke organic papers. I can't use a healthier alternative. Then the, those, oh, the dudes with, something, with some other papers will sue me saying, <sighs> okay. you said your paper's out there, you're mine. Why do I like smoking these more than right. I like I can tell you that. regular old white bleached paper, papers? Bleached white papers. Okay, so a typical bleached white paper isn't just, a lot of times they're not even bleached with chlorine, but they're still whitened. They're still processed, right? A lot, so of, the, a lot of what I call the naturalness has been taken out. No different than necessarily white flour or something like that just a lot of the stuff that i want to stay in there is gone and because of that it's going to perform differently it's not going to burn the same way it's not going to hold together the same way it's not as close to nature as it was before you blasted it with a bunch of chemicals one way or another or even if you bleach it in the sun which i don't really know anyone that does that so another thing that was developed unfortunately for all of us i think was the addition of chalk to rolling papers. This was, again, because we started off in that line of purity, of saying that white is purity. Now it's, your ash needs to be white too. Well, how can I make your ash whiter? I know. I know. That's why. I'll add chalk to the rolling paper. I'll grind up calcium carbonate one way or another. It could be the nicest calcium carbonate in the world, lab grown, doesn't matter. It's still calcium carbonate. I'm going to grind it up into a powder, and I'm going to add it into the paper mix one way or another so that when the paper burns down, what's left behind is going to be chalk dust, essentially. Essentially. And leaves this beautiful white ash there. Wow, that looks so nice, doesn't it? Wow, this is the purest paper I've ever smoked. Look how white that ash is. Oh, yeah, that's so pure, bro. So pure, bro. So bro. It's, a, it's, a, bro. it's a fake trick. I can't say it's fake. What I could say is I call it bogus. Okay. It, it's not. Your ash should be... If you wanted a white ash, it should be white because of your material. Mm -hmm. Not because... Someone added something to your rolling paper or added something to your material. It should just be naturally inherent because of the material, I think. And it also depends on whether or not you want to chase that white ash. People think that white ash is better. What does white ash actually mean? It just means a more complete burn. Mm -hmm. If you can take a, I can take a beautiful plant that will burn white and I can over humidify it just a little too much so that the moisture content goes up. So not as much of it burns off and it will darken the ash because not, it's just not quite the complete burn. Which some people would say, I've heard some arguments of some people saying, that the darker ash, because it's not as a complete of a burn, that it's actually better for you because more of the bad stuff is left in the ash. So now we're on this whole other kick of like, which one's better, which one's worse? Ooh. Yeah, I've heard it both I ways. I have that argument yet. Oh, I heard, because we talked to scientists about this. And when they're telling me this, I'm like, oh, crap. I'm like, another I'm, argument angle. Another argument angle. Like, I'm, not, I'm not going there. Because it doesn't matter to me. You know, what matters to me is that people are happy. But I do want them to have at least knowledge and information, understand what's happening, so they can make a better informed decision for themselves. If you want to smoke chalk, there's nothing wrong with it. But you should know that you're smoking it. You should know it's in your rolling paper. Like actual chalk that you write with? It isn't. It's well, <coughs> just grind it. <coughs> the really good chalk that you get that you get that I if you buy some brand called Full Touch, which is like the nicest brand I've ever seen. Yes, it's just pure calcium carbonate, which is chalk. Um, which it wouldn't be so different than the calcium carbonate that you add to this or the <coughs> calcium carbonate that's in some other like products. I think, <coughs> I think Tums, for example. Oh, really? Yeah. And, and really, there's, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. It's just when I, when I read the MSDS on it, it's telling me that getting chalk dust in your mouth and lungs is an irritant and causes more coughing and irritation. So, and maybe the MSDS is wrong. Maybe they're talking about giant quantities. Don't sue me again. But when I look at this, and you're, when you're someone like me who's trying to achieve <coughs> the highest level of the shit that's ever been done in the history of humanity, you're going to look at this and say, if it has the potential to fuck with me, 
and fuck with the product and the experience I'm trying to give with people, then I don't want that anywhere near my freaking beautiful raw rolling paper. Let's keep it away from there. It could be in the tip. I don't care. Nothing that's going to be burned though. Let's get it away from there. Really? Because I want to give Thomas the best experience he's ever had. And what if that alters his the, the profile of the Terps? What if it changes things? What if I start using other things like galactomannan derivative and things like that? To create, to just, yeah. If, if I start adding things to the paper to make it <coughs> cheaper or make it even perform just differently or maybe even better, I um, how's that going to affect Thomas when he smokes it? What, how's he going to feel about that? I don't think he's going to want that. I don't think so. Maybe I'm wrong, but I'm not going to put it in there. Mm -hmm. so I'll just, let me just keep it as simple as I can keep it and give Thomas the experience that I feel like Thomas's great ancestors would have had when they were essentially throwing things on a fire and breathing in the smoke, you know? Like you're trying to go back. Oh my God, <laughs> man. You put so much thought into this. I don't see how other rolling paper people wouldn't get pissed. Uh, oh, they, like this fucking dude. This fucking guy. This fucking guy again. <laughs> giving away our bullshit <laughs> secrets. But you're they, not. You're kind of just educating people on why your shit is better. Okay. I mean, before I knew you, I started buying raws and smoking them because I tried them once. Yeah. I told you before I started, I went to a smoke shop. Uh, Smoking Jays in Merced. I saw Combs. Oh, I went, Merced. Combs. What the <laughs> fuck does that mean? The guy explained it to me. Bought him, went home, packed him, went, get the fuck out of here. There's no way I didn't just have to roll a joint. Those were the first of its kind, right? That didn't I don't know. Is exist that, before. Were you guys the first people to make cones? The co the, those types of cones, the ones that I've made. There's a man, a, a very smart, awesome man named Arthur, whom oh, I made my first cones back in 93. Mine were different than what you see now. Arthur made cones that were more like this in starting around 94, 90, yeah, 94, 95. So he opened up the world's first commercial cone factory. I used to make cones. I had um, underneath, I lived in a three-car garage, above a three-car garage. And I had my own bong factory underneath for my stores. Yeah. You used to make glass? Yeah. No, no, no. It was all acrylic back then. We're talking ni uh, 90s, man. It was before wow. we had glass. Yeah. We made glass later on, but at first it was just acrylic. Yeah, you would buy the acrylic tubing from like a pool wholesaler and you would blow it out because making a dowel, you'd heat it up with a, hot, with a heat gun and kind of make the little blowout. You'd drill through that, put in a rubber grommet, stick in a down tube that you would often make yourself. I did not know that you used to do this. Yeah, but I've done all the shit. Like I've been doing this for a long time. I've known you for a long time. <laughs> I didn't know you did that. Yeah. What? Yeah, that's where it all comes from. And one thing we made was I loved rolling papers and I preferred smoking out of paper. And my friends would say, no, man, I want a pipe because I can't roll. So finally mm. one day I was like, you know, and they would actually ask me to roll it for them. I would roll it over a pen or something and pull it out, give it to them empty there, you can go fill it. Then one day I realized, hey, I could probably make something even easier to fill. So I, start, I took two sheets back then because we didn't have the kind of king size paper that exists nowadays. I took two <coughs> sheets, <coughs> uh, wet the gum line, put them together. Actually, no, we didn't wet the gum line. I twisted them. All right, I twisted it together like this, rolled it around a dowel we had that we used to use for those down stems and made oh. what was a cone, you know? And... At the top of it, I flared the, the, two, the two lips out like that, and I called it a tulip. Not like the tulips we roll nowadays, but again, I called it a tulip because it had two gum lips. You know what I mean? And it was cool. And then I stuck them in this cigar display I had and started selling them for a quarter a piece. Yeah, we're talking about like 93, around there back then. Wow. And I was selling cones back then. So that was my first experience selling cones. Yeah. <sighs> I get why they're suing you. <laughs> I understand. They're, they're pissed. I'd hey. be pissed too if that was my competition uh -huh. and I didn't like competition. No, they hate me. They would fucking hate you. Bro. They really hate me. Like, I can't I, believe how much. I get it. I, that's one thing I always say. I don't know how people could. How could people hang on someone nice? You have, Well, if he's your competitor, you'll find a way. But there's nothing there. Thomas, they make fun of my laugh. Because they don't know what to do, so it's like literally anything, anything. Fuck your shoes. Look at your fucking hair. Yeah. Look at this fucking laugh. Look at that clown. I'm like, yes, I'm a clown. That's cool. Yeah. Look at my fucking weird ass hair. Right, my, my fucking laugh. I got made fun of my laugh in high school. I'm used to it, man. This is the way I fucking laugh. Oh, man, <laughs> I totally see why. I get it now. Yeah. You just broke that down more. You, we've talked for, I don't know how long about papers. I don't think we ever talked like this. I'm starting to see why. You give a fuck so much. Oh, there's more to it. Just, I know, I'll, I'll hold back some of it. Because again, I don't want to keep you here it. all night. But the one thing, here's how I look at it. I'm right? going to smoke this when you smoke yours. Yeah, no so problem. we'll smoke it together. So okay. no worries. I'll, I'll wait. I'll wait. Oh, is that the one I want you to smoke? Yeah, I'll, I'll wait, wait, I'll wait for you. One. I'll okay. wait for you. No, okay, I'll wait for you. All right. <laughs> That's what we're going to do together. No, so I'll wait for you to smoke so ours together. Oh, oh, God. Okay. That that way, so I'll, I'll just, I'll lay regular one to you ready. Okay. Okay. 
that one I want you to smoke. That's going to be funny. Um, That's going to be funny. <laughs> oh, shit. I'm scared now. No, it's going to be great. Okay. You're going to love it. So, raw success. Here's what I think it comes from. And I, I think I'm right. I believe that you intrinsically, inside of you, know something. You feel something. So, if you were smoking of rolling papers before raw, and it had certain things in the rolling paper that weren't as close to nature as I would like. And you're smoking them, smoking them, smoking them. And then one day someone hands you a raw, right? Nothing like this you've ever smoked before. We're going back 2004, 2005 now. You're around the smoke circle with your friends. They hand it to you. You hit it. What is that? It gets passed around, comes back to you, hit it again. That's different. You're not even sure if you like it or not at first. You just know it's different. But something inside of you, I don't know if it's the reptilian brain or what it is, receives it differently. Or it's just like, that felt more right to me. You don't even realize you're thinking it, but you just do. And the next time you're in the smoke shop, you're going to buy a pack of papers, and there it is on the shelf, and you're like, you don't even know quite know why, but your inner being brings you to the point of that one, that pack of raw. I want that one. I'm going to smoke that one again. And then you bring it home and you roll up, your friends come over and you share it with them and they have the same experience. And next thing you know, little by little through this passing of smoke circles and the naturalness of the experience, you end up smoking raw. And so does many, 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 many other people. So all this marketing, all this stuff and all these things, none of it really works. What really works is this thing inside of you that just brings you to it, it connects with you better and gives you that... M different type of experience than you had before. And you won't even really notice it as much until you go back to that original mm -hmm. shit you were first smoking and you take a couple hits and you're like, yep, what the <clears throat> fuck? Like, I was smoking this? That's so right. I was smoking this? Yeah. I won't say the company. It don't. I won't. <laughs> they get so mad. But holy shit, the time I went back to the paper that I originally smoked yeah. with, it was like construction paper. Yeah. Like when I, like the tips, you can't, they're not malleable. They <laughs> have edges yeah, yeah, when you yeah, try yeah, to yeah, pinch yeah, them know, close I know, I know, I know, they're yeah. sharp edges yeah and that's when i realized and yeah. when i lit it and i got that first <gasps> like oh <laughs> can't do it yeah. i won't smoke i smoke a bowl i will smoke a bowl over rolling another paper yeah and this is before i met you guys you know like this is before i ever fucking knew you guys yeah i just i, I instantly could tell that's when i was selling hello stuff but i could instantly tell that it was different yeah that's like I said, the cone was the first thing. It just got me hooked because like I don't have to roll. And then I got the packs, and it was the king size Supremes. Oh gosh, the fat one. Yeah, that, that was. was the, I was stuck uh, on those for years, like three, four years, man. That's all I would ever roll because you could roll almost an eighth in those. <laughs> that's why. That's why I would uh, use it. Yeah, but that just got me stuck. And I hope a lot of people watching right now that do use raw or and or use another brand get to see. There's a face and there's a brain behind it and there's a story behind everything. Yeah, but it's not about that. What I want them to do is I just want them to really close their eyes and receive the smoke. Receive it from a raw, receive it from some other papers, and see what you like better. You should go with what that, whatever that is. If it's mine, great. If it's someone else's, great too. But take the time to really allow yourself to truly feel it. Think about what you're doing. You know, we were talking about Terps before. When I was talking about Terps, the thing that I want him to do, and I want everyone to do, really, is pause for a moment. Take a break. Just like I'm talking about the paper. Open up the bag. Let, out all, let it all out first. Open it up. Take it in. Receive the Terps. See how it makes you feel. Do that a few times, and you're going to notice you receive things differently from different types. Go with the one that sends the shivers up your brain. You'll feel it come up there. Go with the one that connects with you. Go that direction. It's telling you something, man. And that's kind of the way that paper is. And that's the way a lot of things are if we take the time to allow it to happen. This is a beautiful, magical plant, but not everyone allows the magic to be felt. I don't. I remember I told you? Yeah. But no, when I, when, I, when I sit there and, hmm, how do I? I've never done that in my entire life unless I like my favorite shit and go oh yeah and i'm just smelling and I, I do get that oh yeah 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 ooh. like oh because it's, it's just what i'm smoking now this is what i've been smoking for years because that does that yeah but I'm, I'm never sitting here with every one of them going 
Uh, but like I said earlier, it's my drug dealer. You're always all frustrated dumping your ace into your jar and shit. Yeah, now, now, now I go to the stores <laughs> and buy a bunch of the, There's a certain brand out there that has such clean, good. That's what I'm smoking now. I yeah. love it. And I've been smoking for like eight months consistently. Okay. But you know, my background and what I used to do, yeah. it's weird buying weed out of the shop. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of just going, hey, I'll be right there. <laughs> it's odd, man. It is a change. But I need to, I guess I need to try that. Marty too. He goes, I don't know. I just dump nugs in. That's that's kind of me too. I guess I never really stopped and appreciated. Hold on, where's that turf beans wise? Oh yeah, explain this, please. Hold on, we find Marty's because he's gonna. As we're doing this, he's gonna smoke one. Where's, where's Marty's? 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 This Marty's? Okay, come here. You. This is gonna be great. Okay, this. Thank you, sir. You are more than welcome. Can so please explain that? that. Okay. You explain it to me, and I'm like, oh fuck that. Explain <laughs> it again. I'm already, I'm already, I already need to get reevaluated. What, what is this? It's this is a boosted. Long, you boosted. Now, it's just because I'm trying to explain in a word what it is. So, sure, we add on terpenes. That's been done before. That's awesome. But what we actually add is a molecular extract from certain plants that bind with the CBD molecule to change the way that you receive it. So your CB1, CB2 receptors receive the signal from this differently than if you just smoke just the plant. And because of that, especially if you're someone like me that has a tolerance problem, mm-hmm. you're, it goes around the tolerance simply because it's a completely different signal so it's not being blocked or being turned away from. So you receive it better. And also, it's a different signal, so it actually gives you a different feeling inside. Really? Yeah. So you're saying... Whatever you have should have some type of percent of CBD. It needs to have at least 1% of active CBD for this to really work. um, You need everything. You need a full spectrum. But I need you to have that 1%. Some strains have no CBD. Please don't. I I blend some in. Like these ones you're smoking, I actually sit there and blend in a really good CBD in there to make sure that I know you've got CBD. Just to make sure. So it's like the cone is what the terpenes do and what you did. It activates. Yeah, the terpenes are, are just there as an added booster. The real booster is the, what we call, you'll see on there, cannabinoid hacktivators. Hacktivator? Hacktivator. Love that. I just noticed. <laughs> lemon jack terps. Yes, with lemon jack terps. Rocker. It helps. Rocket booster. Yep. I, uh, I'm trying to explain what it does with marketing and words. I'm trying to legally all, explain. How am I going to sit there and explain all this to somebody? Yeah. You know, be like, okay, let me just sit there and explain it to you for 10 minutes and then go smoke. Like, well, no, no, I got to get you in five words. Like, Oh, how am I going to get you in five words? that's hard. I want to teach you everything about it, though, before you Terps. smoke it. Cannabinoid, cannabinoid hacktivator. I think you did as best as you could possibly do that. to try to explain what the fuck's going on. What the fuck's going on? So, um, this was V1. In V2, I'm kind of blasting you more in the face with, make sure you got that 1% CBD. I'm just sure that's it. I learn as I go, man. Anybody can find that. It's in all 50 anywhere, states. Yeah. Anywhere. Yeah, yeah. Just make sure. And, and that's, that's real that's, strains, that's, like real classic ones, always had like 8% CBD, things like that. So it's, it's if you have a classic strain, you don't need to add anything. It's just some of the nuclear things that are out there. They make a point the way it goes. They increase one thing and they decrease something mm-hmm. else. And so those are the ones I'm more worried about where I'm like, well, oh, wait. It doesn't sure. work. Like, well, if it's, it's really... It's natural in, in its own way, and therefore it's designed to connect to the natural. And when we nuclearize things, we're kind of stepping away from the natural. Yeah. So, Like you said, can, I would like it to be as close to earth, natural earth as possible. Yeah. That's your nice way of going, that shit's full of chemicals. I'll say <laughs> it for you. That's just bullshit. That's a great way of putting it. I would like it to be more natural to the earth. Like, it looks I like a healthier option and how you chose the, the branding. It's the yeah. color. When you walk in, yeah, it's the colors. Was there a lot of uh, other iterations before you landed on this final look that you have? Yes and no. It was designed like I would picture, my, I was raised more by my grandparents than my parents. So I'd picture them with these boxes my grandma would send me when she would go on trips, which was like brown paper packages tied up in string when I was envisioning raw. You know? Oh, that's why you have the string on it. That's part of it. The string really uh, signifies the history of rolling papers. The rolling papers used to come out in a giant sheet from the from the mill, or not from the mill, from the factory, and they would uh, fold, 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 fold it, and then tie it with a string. And that's how you would buy your rolling papers, the original rolling papers. So when you bought your first pack of rolling papers, the first ones ever that were really sold were sold to you like that. Like a scroll. No, it was folded. Oh, and then just folded and tied with a string. And the original folds were done in a way to give you a, t- a tear line. That was your fold, was your tear line for the sheet of paper. And the original rolling papers that we 
we humans ever first smoked were essentially one and a quarters. One and a quarter, yeah. That's the natural size of rolling paper. So like if we're left to our own devices, and there's no taxes and no regulations and no bullshit, the first thing we ever came up with was about that size. So I always try to bring myself to smoke more one and a quarters than anything because I just, but I know more than too many, I know too much. You know what I mean? Where it's like I'm being infected by lessons I've learned throughout history because that is the natural size of a rolling paper. That's why you said I'm trying to bring these back to myself more. That's yeah, why always, you said that. Yeah, we yeah trying to make myself step back from king size because the tendency is to be lazy and go right to a king size like a stuff more in there. But I'm like, no, Josh, if you smoke two one and a quarters, you've got two fresher hits. It's super fun smoking two of them. I was <laughs> going to say that. <laughs> Having two different ones is so much more fun. Yeah. <sighs> okay. Put, okay. Put down one. And I, I need you to light that one up. Let's go. I gave away mine, but it's okay. We're gonna we're gonna smoke that. I'm gonna watch you go. No, no, no. It's better. There's I can walk through more. the experience. No, these are. I gotta fill them. Then we'll take us a little bit of time. These are all empty. Oh shit. Okay. It's okay. No, no, no. Okay. Just keep going. This is gonna be great. All right. Boosted cone, huh? Yeah. Here we go. My question. Ready? Well, wait, wait. Before I ask me a question, just oh, okay. you, you haven't done. Just take it in a little bit. I did earlier. It's very lemony. But I burned it, so it's different. Let, just feel it in there for a moment. It reminds me of going to my mom's work at Cost Plus. And they had all the wooden th- wicker baskets and stuff. That's what it reminds me of. Smells can do that to you. It's one of our strongest. Mm-hmm. It's nostalgia. The quick. closest Boom. tied to memory, I think it said, it right? Yeah. I'll smell something and go, oh, my God, kindergarten class. <laughs> you know, we do that all the time. Oh, pastel. But now that you did this, you already triggered your endocannabinoid system and you're already, you've already received some of the signal. So earlier when I said, I think the ones you roll yourself smoke better. I'll tell you the story why you start smoking that. Come on, light it, man. Okay. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Like, I want you smoking. I can't wait to see. Because there's a little bit of a creeper effect on this and I want to see you go down. Not go down. But I just want to see you. I want to see you get fucked up. I want to see you feel, feel it, man. I want to see you really feel it. So. You got yours going, Marty? Oh, yeah. I learn when you roll something, you've now felt it. You've touched it with your hand. You've experienced like so much information that's gone to your brain about what you rolled up. You already know the stickiness. You know the sensation of it. You know if it's dry or moist or any of these kinds of things. You rolled it up. You know the details of how you rolled it up, especially you. You know, you really know your details. Mm -hmm. So you know how it's going to smoke before you even smoked it. You've got so much information now. And now finally you bring it up and you take that first puff, you're more ready to receive it than if you just bought a pre-roll in a sealed tube and you open it up and light it. It's like a shock surprise. And I believe this is true. I learned this in Ethiopia and all that work I was doing there, the humanitarian work. They taught me to eat with my hands more and they insist on eating with their hands because they feel the food. They know the temperature of it, the texture, the consistency, so much about it. Is that why? Yeah. And finally, when they bring it to their mouth, they already, they're not scared of it. Whereas if you eat food with, that you haven't ever had any human contact with, metal fork, foreign, stick in your mouth, your mouth is like, oh shit, is this going to be hot, cold, sweet? What the fuck is this going to be? What's going to be cold? What the fuck is this? Oh, it's scared to receive, man, you know? I've never thought of fucking food that way in my life. Oh, it's true. The more, if you, and every next, time you, yeah, oh you touch God. it with your hands next time before you take a bite of anything. Touch it and put it in your mouth and then take a fork and do the same thing and see how you receive it. It's the same thing as this. When you smoke that one that you rolled yourself compared to pop open a plastic tube and take a hit, it's night and oh, it's day, man. 100%. Yeah. I'm going to be eating fucking pho with my hands and shit. <laughs> <laughs> Like Josh said. <laughs> oh, man. Don't blame it on me. You blame this one on me. Yo, I, I like this. Good. But I'm waiting for it to creep up on you. I like it. Just waiting for it to creep up on you. It's, it's not going to knock you down, but it's going to give you a different feeling. That's all I wanted to do. Huh. Okay. I like this. Marty, how's your oh, taste? Oh, yeah. This is great. I was over here taking it in, smelling it. Yeah. I like this resin ring going on. I like that. That's my favorite part about joints. When they start dripping. Yeah. That's when you feel like, oh, God, savor this motherfucker. We've got this 35 percenter. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. Um, so my question or statement into question. 2014, you guys were like, how would you like to be a brand ambassador and help us out? I go, oh, my fuck. I remember where I was standing. I remember, oh, perfect circle. <laughs> I remember where I was standing. I remember everything. It was at the Push Trees house. <sighs> Bathroom behind me to my left. My fucking door to my right. I mean, my left. Front door TV, and I looked at it. The guy Jason that used to run you guys' stuff, remember? I looked at it and went, Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. I remember, Where's Rosie at? <laughs> Where the fuck is Rosie at? So it was just Wiz Khalifa, right? Yeah. And I remember, like, Wait, did you, 
<laughs> fucking <laughs> all excited like fuck yeah i want to be part of you guys' team so since then i've seen you work with so many people which is the direction you're supposed to be going what's the collab you always wanted to do you haven't done what is the dream collaboration for you as a person that's done so much what's the one person you want to work with company and to do whatever whatever it is a raw times this raw there, collaboration every two. two go okay first one is just because willie fucking nelson man. nice <laughs> all right that's cool because it's fucking willie fucking have you nelson, reached out man. to these people i've tried to reach out to willie i've not had good luck in reaching out to oh, willie fucking nelson really yeah i figured he'd be right up right up the alley, yeah i know man. i know i got invited to his thing a couple times but it was never personal enough where i was like no gotcha i've been told like i know people that know him they tell me stories of how he does certain things you know he was using one of my um one of my inventions, which was a toilet brush safe for real, something I created. Don't ask me why I make crazy. You've things made sometimes. other things besides oh, yeah, smoking I make stuff. Stash Are you stuff an engineer? No, you have like a background. Idea is, no. Okay. So I made this toilet brush safe. I called it a never touch safe because I knew if I use, if I put this in my house, that there's no fucking way that someone's going to go through there trying to find something. You know what I mean? So I made this toilet brush safe. It looks like a toilet brush. Put it in the corner by the toilet. Ain't no one ever going to touch it. And it's it. a safe. It's a safe. Fuck yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't sell it anymore, but I do. I did. And Willie put one on his tour bus and fucking loved it. He loved that thing. So I know I've been always told stories like, "I'm like, come on, I got me Willie. He knows me. He loves my shit. He smokes what? my papers. Why can't I hang out you with Willie?" You made other stuff, man. Is there anything else you can say right now that you made that was fucking awesome? I feel like the rest of development, corn baller. <laughs> like, made, like, what else have you made? You've made a toilet brush safe. Is that a toilet brush safe. I made some of the one, a lot of your pocket scales you've ever used in your life. The better ones are probably for me. Really? Yeah, I make some incredible scales. I, I know the Titan Trons you make, right? Titans, the JSTs. Titan, Titans, it's called. Right. Titan, or, no, I have two. Triton. The Triton. Triton. I have three yeah. of those. Yeah, everybody loves I have them. a fucking house. I've yeah, never great. broken one. Right. And that lid comes off. Off center to do a tray. Yeah. It's the same shit I do. I know. Yep. I like trying to bring it to another level. With scales, I was working on real hardcore in like 2000. And then I got so far with it when I, I kind of ran out of improvements. So I just kind of, I moved my focus away. I you just sold those, man. Yeah, no, no, I, I was making them. made that? No, I make them, I make them, I make them. I try to make them the best they can be, you know? I'm in there, sitting there taking the stainless steel trays on them and adding a little lip that goes around it because I'm realizing shit's yep. rolling off. I'm, <laughs> then if something does roll off, I'm trying to add a catch basin. Somebody rolls off, it goes into there, so it gets happened to the back. Like, I'm trying to bring it. I'm trying to really freaking bring it. And those are down to the point. Yeah. Point yeah, zero yeah, zero. Yeah. yeah. I love it. Depending on which one you want. I got ones that go to point one. I got ones that go point zero zero one. Point zero zero one. Really? I'm, I, yeah, I'm trying to bring it, man. Yeah, like I'm just trying to bring it the furthest I didn't it know can you be made that. that. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I thought you just gave me a couple like, hey, check these out. No, 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 no. Some of my stuff. Yeah. Oh, sick. Even better. I love it even more now. <laughs> I didn't know you made it. And the tray on the side, I yeah. even said, whoever made this knew what they were making it for. Yeah. <laughs> love this tray. There's yeah. been many times where I'm like stacking, and then yeah. those people doing it right now going, Oh, I get get a cup. Just get yeah, a cup. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know yeah. there's a lot of people doing it's it right a cup now. Thing. Yeah, I yeah. know, I know. So you made the toilet brush and that sorry. Back to it. Willie Nelson. Sorry yeah, for the Willie rant Nelson. city over here. Willie Nelson, he hasn't reached out, but he loved your toilet brush. Yeah, I, I, that'd be fucking great. Who's the other collaboration you would love to have? Of course, man. It's fucking Jay Z. Imagine that. Really? Yes. It's his favorite person. Oh. Jay Z collab? Jay-Z. I would love to do a Jay Z collab. I'm working like his people use my papers for um his pre roll. Like all of his pre rolls are done. Like you know, he's got his company right. Yeah, now. yeah. Those are all done in my papers, and we we've even worked on. I don't want to give away secrets. I got to be careful. Yeah. We've even worked on something really special with them. But I want to work with him. Yep. You know what I mean? I get it. Wow, yeah. those are two great, great uh, collaboration, dream collaboration. Who would you collaborate with? Adam Sandler on just life. <laughs> just ha- give me a high five and then make my whole life. That's fine. Oh, come we on. To, we don't, we don't have to collab. Just a high five with my I'm just family. saying just that right there. I'd be like, bro, do you know what the fuck I did today? I high five <laughs> the high shit out of Adam Sandler today. But, um, oh, would you shit hand him or you could actually get a five hand him? Shit hand, you know, you put it down there and then you shit hand him. Shit hand him? What's shit that hand mean? Him. Are you called a brown hand? There's so many things. Are you, you talking about mall rats? <laughs> yes, <laughs> of course I am. Would you like a chocolate pretzel? Would you like a chocolate covered pretzel? God, I love that fucking movie I thought so you said shithead, man. So I'm thinking oh. like, oh, you're going to shithead him. No, really? I love Adam Sandler so much. So we're going to get definitely mall rats in, man. Come on, that'd be God, great. I love fucking mall rats. Oh, you, you're Kevin's, you're friends with Kevin Smith. Yeah, you you, you know what? You know mall rats. God, I love that fuck. It's a schooner. It's a fucking boat, stupid. <laughs> God, I love that movie so much. Um, So, Willie Nelson, Jay-Z. For me, yeah, Adam, a collab- I don't know, man. That's a good question. Mm-hmm. It's a good question. Uh, 
and on videos or st- you mean like clothing? Anything. Anything. Hmm. Good question. So a light just went out. Sorry. Sorry, guys. Um, <laughs> I've never been asked this question. Uh, we, well, we we talked about it openly, but Vance hit hit us up last year to do some stuff, and then just never get us back. <laughs> so that was my other one. Like, I would hey, love Vance to hit do me up fans. and did the same thing. Mark, you hear this bullshit? The same thing, man. Are you serious? Yeah, I, I was all excited. I think we were going to do a raw Vans, and they just they just went cold. Yeah, that's yes. what happened to us. I was like all excited, because I fucking love Vans. No Hopefully way. Hopefully they'll come back to both of us. That's my favorite shoe. Dude, imagine if we did all three of us together. Me, you, and Vans. I would fucking love that. That come would be on. sick. That would be so much fucking fun. Oh, my God. So that'd be my collab. Yeah. <laughs> Vans and Adam Sandler. There we go. <laughs> my favorite shoe ever. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to the Mid-Roll Ad Read, and this episode is brought to you by Miller Lite. All right, guys, let's get right into this. If you go right now to www.millerlite.com forward slash Yola, that's going to give you a landing page to every place in your area that delivers beer to you. But if you want a Miller Lite right now, go to any place on earth that sells beer. One of the things I always say, what does Miller Lite remind you of? To me, it reminds me of hanging out with my uncle, some of the best times of my entire life, and it's the nostalgia is what makes me... Love this beer. And for all the health nuts out there, 96 calories per can, 3.2 grams of carbs. Once again, you can go to MillerLite.com. MillerLite.com forward slash Yola brings you right to the landing page, shows you all the places in the area that deliver to you. As I said before, and I'll say it again, if you want a Miller Lite right now, go to any store that offers beer. Since 1975, Miller Lite has been brewing beer for people that just like beer. No games, no gimmicks, just beer for people that actually like it. Once again, guys, please celebrate responsibly from the Miller Brewing Company in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. As always, thank you so much for supporting the brands that support us. It's Miller time. Let's go. <sighs> oh, man. So uh, good. All right. I love this question. Marty is switching the cameras. I have a question from Marty. Okay. That I'll, I'll, I'll move on to the next one real quick. Um. You're, you said you do the work in Ethiopia. And I know a lot of people are like, what are you talking about? Yeah. So you started your foundation, and in Ethiopia, you're doing the well water, correct? Water wells. Water yeah. wells. Water wells. Now, I have to be careful about this with the foundation. So the foundation is not a 501c3. It's not that tax hedge thing that you see people do where they set up a, what's called a charitable trust or whatever the fuck, something like that, and they could put money there and get big tax write-off. It's not like that at all. Like the money we give, we actually Give. give. You know, so it's not like, I don't want to call it a foundation anymore because of all the bad names from Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton and all their foundation shit. For us, it's really about giving. So now I call it raw giving to make it clear that what we do is oh, we changed freaking it. give. I thought that was just like a, like a slogan you guys went with. Nope. Because like, it used I, to be raw foundation. Yeah, now, I'm just, now I, I need to make it clear as to what we're actually doing, which is actually giving. You're not taking a bunch of your fucking money and putting it away there for a tax dodge. It's, you have to give it. Like, if it's given, it's gone. There's something I once, I once read from Marcus Aurelius, which said, the only wealth you ever keep is the wealth you give away. Because once you give it away, it can, it's gone. So like, the, I learned this, you know, because I went through the shit with the feds, with the machine gun to the head and the handcuffs and the whole thing. And because once you've gone through that shit, you know what I mean, with the guys with the helmets and all that shit, once you've gone through that, you realize a lot of this is very, it's not just temporary, it's like beyond temporary. At any moment now, the feds are going to come back through that door right there. They're going to kick it open. They're going to put me in the handcuffs again, down on the floor with the machine under the head, the whole fucking thing, take away everything I ever earned. And for, for, for papers? They'll find some way, man. Who knows? Right? I'm saying this happened to you already? Oh, yeah. Over yeah, yeah. papers? It happened to me over. I, I sold a bong to the daughter of the United St- States Customs Service special agent in charge for the Northern District of Florida. And she was 18, but it was still my store's fault. I didn't even do it myself. My store did it. Um, it was my, my fault for selling her that pipe, not her fault for buying it. And he came in with a Bible in his hand and the machine guns and all of his friends, door flies open, the whole thing, like full on. Kicked your store in? Oh yeah, came full on in, man, full on. House, store, everything. He's threatening to shoot my great Dane because my dog's barking at him. You know what I mean? Just like, it was fucking awful, just awful. Because you just legally sold this girl a bong? Right, well, it was illegal. Bongs are illegal back then. This whole fucking bullshit. Oh, the, oh, <laughs> the 90s, man. I didn't put man. the time for reference. Oh, you got played before Chong got played. Yeah, Chong got played a few years later. I didn't realize bongs were illegal at one point. Yeah, yeah, Water yeah. Water pipes. <laughs> like, 
water pipes yeah. and they're not bongs. Oh man, it's like, like it, the, if you heard them argue, they'll say they still are. I don't believe they are because of the I way like the law this, is. By the way, good. I'm glad you like, I like it. this. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm still waiting for it to creep on you a little bit. You're gonna like it more in a moment. I like this. So you got raided because of that, <sighs> but it's not about me getting raided. That's cool. It's about the experience of getting raided made it where I look at things a lot. It's a lot more temporary. It doesn't mean I got to make money and throw it away quick. It's like I laugh about the things like the, all the all the millions of dollars that we've truly given away, truly given away. Mm-hmm. Right. That's important. You look back on that. And the cool thing is you, it's gone. I could be living under a fucking bridge and I still did that. There's no losing that. Got that. Totally feel that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I did it. It's done. It's over. Fuck you. Oh, he didn't really do it. Yeah, but I did. I was there. I was there. I'm I was really there. Idea. I seen it. I know it's done. Right? I drank from the well, bro. It's there. So I've you're building well. I mean, you're doing you're doing way more. I've seen you guys building yeah. buildings. So what is exactly what is your goal when you went there versus <laughs> what's your goal right oh, now? Oh, that's a question. It's a t- okay, fine. For your goal when you went there was to start. What's your goal now that now you know what you're doing? You've met these people. You know them by name. You know these kids. You see them yeah. grow up. You've seen them go to school. What is it now? What's the goal now? 100,000. 100,000 people? I want to save 100,000 lives before I die. That's the goal. With that? Through, it doesn't matter how. And saving them could mean actually saving them they were going to die or making their life so much fucking better that you pretty much save their life, mm-hmm. right? Um, getting girl, keeping girls from being raped, um, terrible shit like that. Fistula, which I really would... What all, is that? Like it does, was he uh, when um, some, and I called him my, because we work, this is areas that I work in. Some of my people uh, might be forced to have sex when they're too young and a tear happens between the anus and vagina and it causes an infection and, the, or maybe even have a baby too early and having the baby too early is actually even more common. Um, uh, before they were ready to have a baby, again, it causes tearing and something called fistula or essentially a poop goes into the vagina oh. and you end up with terrible infections and you're going to die from this. So how do you stop it? Well, of course, fixing it surgically afterwards is something that you do, but preventing it from happening in the first place is so much better, right? So how do you prevent it from happening in the first place? Well, you got to get the girls working more. You got to get them more power. You got to get them more control. You can't have them walk to that water well because they get raped on the way to the water well. The guys know they walk to that water well every day. What if they don't walk to the water well anymore? Well, Okay, so you pump, pump it up well here, to solar pump down there, send it up to the village. Now the girls, with the, with the exchange with the village elders of when the girls no longer have to do this, they must go to school. Yes, we will, get, we will sign this contract saying that. Yes, cool. So now not only do you bring the water to the, to the village, but now the girls are going to school and you're kind of breaking a whole cycle of something that are should- Are you getting pushback from people that don't want that there? No. Good. No, we don't get pushback in that regard. Some of the work we've done against- uh, just female genital mutilation. We've gotten some pushback, but it's, um, I don't care. I'm still going to fight. Yeah. Uh, like, there's not much I'm going to fight about, but it's going to be like, no. Yeah, so we, will, we will bring you this water, we will do this, and you will sign this, that there will be no FGM here ever, as long as that water well is operating. And they're like, Uh-oh. no, no, no. Okay, then no. That's the only way this will happen. Okay. So you have a whole section. Is it, is it towns? Is, I don't know Villages. how it works. Villages, is it just one village or you have like a, a, a certain you're diameter? going to areas of greatest need. So you're floating around. Gotcha, that's what I was... And it used to be like one village at a time, right? You'd go to one village, you'd put in a, what's called an Afro Dev 5000 hand pump with a great hand pump. It, it needs some maintenance. You'd put in the water, you'd, you'd drill, hit the water, put in the pump, uh, create a well commission where everybody that uses it pays a little bit of money just to ma- help maintain it. Some, one person you teach how to really run it and they have to teach other people how to run it as well. Sorry if I'm talking too fast, man. I you're good. You would, you would create a little community around it and you would leave and there's your well and it's done and, and you come and check on it. If they really need your help, they let you know and you develop a system for that. It used to be done like that. Now, because of lower cost solar, now it's one central well somewhere where there's really good access to water and then you'll solar pump that water to eight villages and, wow. then, and you do it in a way where it just runs on its own. There's no, one, there's no switch to turn off. The sun comes up, water starts flowing into storage tanks that are at those each one of those places. If the storage tank overfills, the water runs over. That's it. You better use all that water. Okay, so then the crops are being planted around it, and it just runs on its own. Down at the very base where the main thing is, there'll be somebody, one way or another, that is really in charge of just protecting that area, just making sure that 
no one comes in to try to steal the solar panels or something like that or tries to charge their phone off the panels which is something we've dealt with there's lots of stuff like that that you deal with and it's just okay it's all part of human nature but you just have to make sure that everything's fine wow how many have you done dozens man dozens we've done so many of these projects now some are huge like the ones we do for the sisters of mother Teresa, where we i think we've done all of their hospitals now in ethiopia i think like um all seven the wells there like there were seven compounds if i remember right there's seven compounds uh, throughout ethiopia for the sisters of mother Teresa, and i believe we've given water to all of them at this point it started with just one and then i, I couldn't believe it was me like i'm saying it like oh yeah i'm just doing water wells with sisters of mother Teresa. thomas this is me and you man no, i know so imagine if somehow, just for the fucking miracle of fate and weirdness and who the fuck knows what, you end up, you have the responsibility of being the primary water giver for the Sisters of Mother Teresa in Ethiopia. Whoa. Hospitals that, that house 800 people at a time, worst conditions you ever can imagine within the depths of like a horror movie. And now you're responsible for getting them water because they don't have water. <sighs> cool. How are you going to live with that, man? Right? So you deflect it. You can't really take it in. You can't really accept it. But then you just sit there and you, you kind of step out of yourself and you feel detached from it because it's a lot of responsibility to bear. And you didn't want this responsibility, but it was given to you by the universe. So what are you supposed to do? Say no? You say no, you know what happens. Yeah. I know what happens. It ain't going to be good. The universe is going to smack me silly. It asked for this, we do this. We are humans. We stand up for each other and we do it. And we do it as good as it can possibly be. And then you don't just fucking do it like Unix. I'm sorry, I'm getting upset. I get mad at um, certain United Nations organizations that do these things where they build these beautiful fucking wells. I'm getting angry. I don't want to get angry. Um, they build these beautiful things for TV where they put in a well with a kid's merry-go-round on it so the kids will play on it to pump the water. And the, as they're playing on it, it sends the water to a tank over there and it's all this really cool stuff. And then they take their pictures and their videos for CNN and shit and then they leave. What do you think happens? How are you going to attain this thing, man? Come on, be realistic. Yeah. You didn't develop a water use committee. You didn't do what needed, really needed to be done here. Did you create a sanitation system for them? Did you teach them about the digging toilets? Did you do anything like this? No, you just made some really cool stuff that looks great for you, and you left. Mm -hmm. And now I got to come there and pick up the freaking pieces, take what's left of the stuff, and just throw it, away, throw it out. Use the original thing you dug and use that. Attach onto it with a normal pump and teach people how to use, realistically, how to, how to use water from here and how to share it correctly. And, and then I got to stay in touch with them so that when... The pump really breaks and they didn't have enough money with it that they saved up themselves that we can go in there and do a repair project and get it keep it going how long have you doing it. this it seems like over five years now oh, before i moved here much more than that i don't know what year we started this stuff it's been a while now i want to say 2014 13. probably before then man. yeah yeah because i remember it was it came with um i have this theory that like with every gift comes a request. So I was on a, I was working in this vegan charity called Earth Save. And it was, I just remember we had this incredible year at my company where we made a bunch of money, more money than I ever thought I'd make my whole life. And I look at this like, holy shit. It was after we had accomplished a bunch of stuff like the launching of Raw, all things that people said could never be done. And I'm looking down and, and at that day, if I remember right, maybe my mind changes it. A fax came over the fax machine. That's what it was like, which was a plea for help from a town called Dekicha, Ethiopia, where they they'd had no rain at that point for more than a year. And the crops had, had died, the animals had died, and now the people were dying, and they were refusing to leave, and it was a plea for help. And I looked at this, and it was really, I think it was the same day I got the results telling me how well we had done. And I didn't know how to handle that, because I can't. And just being honest, I can't, man. So it's a weird feeling. It is. I can't handle any of that stuff. I look at him. It's like, oh, people tell me these great numbers we do. And I'm like, okay, cool. That's great. All right. So let's go back to, you know, just, just go back. Let me make something really cool. Let me, let me teach you a new way to roll. I can handle that. My mind can accept that. And I looked at that fax and I, I thought to myself, I can solve this, man. If anyone can solve it, it's going to be me. I just did that. Look at those fucking numbers we did. There's got it. If there's any water in the area, I can get them water. There's got to be a fucking way. And that set me on a journey that I'm still on today. We got them water. We saved that village. It was awesome. And that set me on to another one and another one. And they got bigger and bigger. And then you're there visiting and you find another thing and another thing and another thing. I'm on a little bit of a soft spot at the moment because during the, and I'm going to call it a civil war in Ethiopia at the moment, one of my projects 
that I knew was, a good, was in trouble got blown up. And it got really hurt badly. And some of the people I love got really shot. One of them got shot. I'm sorry. And it's a, it's a place where I always felt I should have been there. I could have, got, could have held that fucking gate, Thomas. No, I get what you're saying. I could have held that fucking gate. And I know it could have held a gate. I mean, there's not much you can do when you are you don't know what's coming. Yeah, yeah, I knew it was coming. I knew it was coming. I get what you're saying, man. I knew it was coming. But also, you're what's making everything work. You know what I'm saying? You're, you're the, the the key holder. Yeah, yeah. You can't hold the gate open and something happened to you, then what happens after that? I know it's a weird way to think about it, but that's yeah. kind of how it works. That's why people have security. The main person is because that person makes everything work. And then everyone else is affected after that point if that's gone. So it's not like we need to save them for ourselves, but it's more of like everyone's gone if you're gone. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I I, I know, and I give myself consolation with something that uh, Sister Morella once said to me when she was talking. Because when I was leaving there, the first time they said, in Afar, say, I don't know it was in Afar, Dewey Dawa, and I didn't want to leave. I had this feeling I was like, I just, I looked at this area and I looked at these beautiful people, the sisters and all the people they were helping. And I'm looking at these beautiful people and they're so much more beautiful than me. You know, I'm looking at their lives. They've given their life to help others for real. Not the kind of bullshit way that I do. They really fucking give literally here. Mm-hmm. And I'm looking at this rickety fucking gate. And there's a dude there with, a, he's got a gun, ain't much of a gun. It ain't much of a gate. It's like, and I'm looking at this as we're leaving, and I'm like, I can't leave you to this. There's some really bad people on the other side of that gate, and I know they want to come through. And they're telling me, first of all, they wouldn't let me even stay the night because they, they were like, you'll get kidnapped tonight. No, you can't. It's a you war must. zone out there like that right now? Yeah, you're on the edge. Of, you're on Somaliland, essentially. So, yeah, you're, in some, you're, in, you're really in the, you're in the shit, you know? It's, a, it's incredible, most beautiful place. But it's, there's some serious things going on. And... So, and I had the conversation. The conversation was something like, you know, I, I want to stay. I have not done anything compared to what you They were thanking me. I'm like, I haven't done anything compared to what you do. And they're telling me, Josh, if you don't, you must go. If you don't go do what you do, then we can't do what we do. Exactly. We have no ability to make money. We don't even know what this is here. This is, anyone can give their life. Not anyone can do, can help us the way you have. But you're like, okay, so you take that as strength and you take it as motivation and then you go, you're like, okay, 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 okay. And you walk out that gate knowing full well that you wanted to hold that gate. You wanted to sit there. I told the guys, I, t- I was like, I really wanted to make a call and call up. I don't know why I was going to call Dale, one of my guys, and be like, I need you to send guns and a lot of ammo. A lot. You know what I mean? We're going to hold this gate right Just here. Just for the right fucking here. water thing? It's the whole hospital, the whole compound. Oh, oh, oh. I thought, I got you. I thought you meant it was like the pump that they were coming to do. No, they were coming to, it's the, the whole, whole hospital. The whole thing. Yeah. It's religious problems. I've done other, other things. The sisters are not oh, the same religion wow. as some of the people that are around them, and it just creates conflict. Even though they're just there to help, it still creates a point of where there's going to be a, there's a potential flashpoint. Yeah. Right now, current day? Current day. When I was, what, last time I was there before that, they were crying because I don't want to go negative. I don't want to go negative. No, I got you. I got you. In another place they were at, the, um, some bad people had come in and killed all of them except for one sister that hid behind a door that was open and she was in a little crack when the door was open. And so in Yemen. So it's, um, things happen, man. Yeah. When someone's really angry and they have no one to lash out against, they lash out against whoever they can lash out against. Mm-hmm. The representative in their mind, the closest thing they can to whatever they're angry about. Well, you're doing everything you can do, man. Yeah. You know? No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Everything you can do while maintaining everything else. Yeah. Because there's going to be a point in your, in your life, like we talked about, where you're like, I can hand this over. I can hand this over, and I'm going to do something else. Yeah. Like you're saying, maybe you can spend more time there. How much? How long are you there? You're going, I see you. Every time I call you, you text me back or call me four days later. Just got your call. Just got your text. <laughs> yeah. How you doing? I'm like, oh, you're in, you're in Ethiopia. Oh, you're in Spain. Yeah. Oh, you're, I know you're somewhere else. Yeah. I know you're somewhere else. You do a lot, though. Yeah, because yeah. before we even got into the foundation, that's a lot on your fucking plate as it is just to maintain. Yeah, you know, and then maintain all of that is another big step. And I think uh, I I wouldn't feel bad, man. I think you're doing a good job. I think you're doing a great job more than most people or anybody I've met before. 
Okay, I'll far. say one last thing before I cut you off on that thing. I don't accept what you're saying because I know that every little piece, even this beautiful watch, if you, you go into this mindset, which is a terrible mindset to go, and it's not a mind, it's not a journey towards happiness with how many people you could have saved if you hadn't bought the watch. Totally get it. If you hadn't bought this, you hadn't bought that. And I, it ends up weighing on you with each thing you buy. You're mm-hmm. like, wow, how many people could I have? How many people could I have? How many people? And uh, it, it, it sends you to a spot that's hard. It's a hard place to be happy. I try to get out of there, man. And I do a lot. But there is that uh, point exactly that holds saying. on in the back there of mm-hmm. like, it's uh, you, some people would call it guilt. I call it more of maybe it's just grounding. I don't know. Try not to look at it in a negative way. It's important to realize that everything does come with a cost. And that's okay, man. But then when I'm working, when I'm working on a project, when I'm making something, when I'm doing stuff, it does add weight to the process in a good way. Where I'm like, no, I got to make this. I got to make it as good as it possibly can be, better than anyone has ever made it before in the history of fucking humanity. And I got to bring it out there and it's got to be a success so I can do even better. So yes, I can give back more and I can fucking even bring it and I'll exactly. be an even better person that way. We're going to go, guys, let's go. And my team's like, okay, man, let's do it again. <laughs> you know, and then we end up down that road. So you, you can you use it in a way to motivate. That's how I, That's exactly how I see it. Like, like That's what I was trying to say, but you, you did, said it better. You're the puzzle piece. The better you do, the better everyone can do, the more you can do. Yeah. I know you're saying like, well, I have this watch. Well, also you ate food today and yeah. you did other things and you have a bed. That bed's $1,000. You could have gave that. It's a never ending cycle. Yeah, it never ends. But also you're helping as much as you can. Yeah. I mean, you're helping. You also are a dad. You have other things in life yeah. besides You'll have that time, man. You're giving that time right now and at a time where you don't have it to give. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. So don't, right. you know what I mean? I, I know you're what right. you're saying. I know what you're saying. Like, I can't accept. But also, in the back of your head, know that you're doing what you can right now. You're, you own a business. You're, you're doing multiple things. Yeah. You're inventing toilet safes. <laughs> fucking doing way more than I thought you were doing, which is amazing. But... I've known you for a long time. And I've learned a lot more right now than a lot of our conversations about the stuff you've done. Yeah. And it's very uh, inspiring slash eye-opening. I didn't know how much you're actually, I mean, you're doing a lot, man. Yeah, I do. And I was trying to make, some of the stuff is fun. A lot. You're doing a lot, a lot, man. And I think that, once again, now I know why motherfuckers are out here suing you. <laughs> <laughs> Let's bring it back to that. Yeah. These fools are out here at fucking Vegas at strip clubs going, fuck this guy. <laughs> fuck this well. I get it. I get why people, it's it's another uh, oh, and bad I mean, human quality. Some of those dudes hired a, hired, hired um, private investigators to For follow sure. me around of Vegas. Course. They're all thinking I was going to be into something really Some fucked weird. up. Yeah, weird. Like, joints. And the reports was like that apparently. was like, eight they're all that. He smoked with this guy. Then he went here and smoked with this guy. He was hanging in front of this hotel smoking with this guy. Then he went to this place and he smoked inside. And it was like, yeah, man. Sorry, man. <laughs> yeah, <that's pretty> <laughs> <much> <laughs> My life is pretty fucking lame, bro. Sorry. We were just I had a lot out. of fun, though. We were just hanging out fuck out. Then he passed out on a couch. Yep, that's me. Then he cool. passed out on a couch. <laughs> that Not in his hotel room. <laughs> in someone oh, else's right. couch. Um, <laughs> like, oh, sorry, man. Yeah, that's me. Sorry, gotcha. Well, the people that are supporting are supporting what you do and supporting the uh, Rock Giving. Not yeah, foundation. Rock Giving. Rock Giving. Because that's what it's about. So, right now, let's take a question or two from the fans that... Marty, I didn't know he did this. You already asked the fan questions and yeah. you have them ready? Yeah, yeah. It has to do with this, too. So a bunch of people asked this, mainly I'm sodium chloride and oh my uh, God. BCS frenzy. Of all your inventions, of all the skews and everything across the board, has there been one that stands out as your favorite? Yeah, yeah, definitely. It would be um, Raw Classic one and a quarter because that was the first one. And like when I think of Raw, that's the mental picture I get in my head mm. is that one pack, the Raw so one and a quarter. used to be on the posters. Yeah, that's yeah. My, my favorite one. Yeah, that, th- one? that was the 3D rendering on yeah. the posters. Every smoke shop, man. Every fucking smoke shop <laughs> yeah. had it. Yeah. Oh, thinking of raw posters just brings me back to like to just what? legally going into smoke shops, just seeing posters like raw. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Cyclone. Feel it. See this feeling you got there? You see that yeah. feeling? That's the feeling I had when I was like 15 walking into these fucking little head shops where I dreamed I wanted to open my, my own store. That same uh-huh. feeling, Thomas. And I still get it to this day when I walk into them. But that's the feeling. That's the way it's I always cool. want to feel. I know you're like, it's oh, awesome. It's like a world of possibility. And every time I make shit, I go, we made that? Yeah. When I was a kid, I would never thought we'd be making this shit. I'm so yeah, excited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I used to buy stuff on uh, drjays.com and buy a new shirt coming out. I'm like, yeah. Who designed this shirt? What a cool design. Well, I would like to make a shirt one day. 10 years goes by. I'm like, oh, shit, we're making clothes. <laughs> and it's that feeling like, 
I remember this. And it's just fun. For yeah. you, it's like going back into the head shops. No, it's me, the it's same like, thing. It's just a different perspective, same feeling. You wonder what the feeling is? It's the feeling that Charlie had when he walked into the chocolate factory. <laughs> Let's go. Look at him, look at me. We talked <laughs> about some of this earlier. Yeah. <laughs> we talked about this when you got here. <laughs> Did you? That's Because cool. it's true. You know it's true. It's the feeling, man. You got that feeling. I get that feeling too. It's a, such a beautiful, it's like amazement and wonderment, a world of possibilities. <laughs> That's what it is. Yeah. It's like there was anything possible. Now it's like when you get, I mean, I don't have kids obviously, but I have multiple kids slash businesses that I call yeah. my kids and I'm doing this and doing that. And I'm thinking there's no time for this. There's no time for that. And then when you stop and think about it, you almost have no time to stop and think about it. like, look what we've done. Yeah. I, I, I know you rarely do that. I know you don't. Yeah, not as much. Not, not as much shit at all. You know, in fact, but almost never. Yeah. <laughs> I know you know, but there's got to be a time where you're the only one in the warehouse on a skateboard. And just That's when it happens. Yep. That'd be the only time we just hear, yeah. the, hear wheels only. I'm there on a Saturday for some reason. It happens to be one where no one else is working. Yep. And I'm skateboarding around the place, like, wow. having, trying to allow myself to accept that wowness. Like, oh, mm-hmm. my God, this is real. This is fucking real. This is fucking real. This is fucking real. This is fucking real. You know, just. You have to be shit. by yourself. Yeah. You have to you be alone. Be you're right. Anyone. I didn't think about that. You have to. That's the only time you can remember, oh, wow, in fourth grade, I did this. Because other people, it's, it's not a distraction. It's you have to give your energy to somebody else to go, hey, I'm, I'm, you're cool, right? Everything's good. You're not bored. You're not sitting there. Me just fucking spacing out. And when you're by yourself, you allow yourself to be kind of selfish. That's yeah. how I, with your time. Okay. That's how I look at it. Yeah. When there's other people, I can't, I have to be like, you good? Everything good? In my head, because it's always, I think of how are you feeling kind of thing. But when you're just by yourself, when's the last time you laid down? next to a tree and just laid there by yourself. It's been a while. I've done it, but it's been a while. It's been too fucking long now that you said it. Kid. Ooh, a child is the last time I ever did it. Yeah. That feeling right there is the feeling going through the thing like, wow, we did this shit. I'm like, oh my God, it's <laughs> real. <laughs> and you, especially if your fucking warehouse is a Costco. Yeah, it's bigger than Costco. It's huge, <laughs> dude. It, it's fucking massive. That the Right when there, the shelf, when it came in, when I got it, I go, it's kind of like Josh's shelf. It's the first thing I thought when the landlord left him. It's like, kind of like the raw shelves. <laughs> wow. Like, for those are forklifts in here, but good shit. Yeah. So when I was here the first night, I had a bong. I was hitting it. I went, oh, we have a fucking warehouse. Isn't it? And, and you can barely accept it, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not even yet. Every time we walk through, I'm like, oh, my God, the office? I'm leaving work? <laughs> Locking up? Like, oh, my fucking God. Because, you know, it's in my apartment forever. Yeah. So you... Don't allow yourself to have that because it's the rare moment that you're by yourself yeah, in there. I'm going to do it more now. Yeah, you have to, man. Just ride there, smoke it, and just listen to the skateboard wheels. It's going to echo, and you're going to be by yourself. It's just, that's what it's about. It's so fun. <laughs> and I know you especially because you have that gigantic spot. So that's what I'm trying to say. You don't have to, you don't allow yourself to get that way, but you have to sometimes. Oh, now that you said that, I will thinking. more. Like, yeah. Now it's in my mind. It's not yeah. going to stop. I'm going to do it soon. I'll probably, a lot, do it, man. I'll probably do it this coming weekend. There you go. Yeah. What? How old is Raw right now? How long have you been doing Raw, the actual brand? I like okay, right around 2004 till now. Wow. So you're looking at 18 years, right? Wow. Yeah. How many people does it take to make a company like Raw run? A lot. Because like um, it, it depends upon what you mean by company and, and people. Like for example, in, in Bali, just making cones, there are thousands. So you've got that going on where there's that many thousands. And then you've got... Um, in Alcoy, a couple hundred, and uh, in Arizona, a hundred or so direct. Then you have all like, um, we, we have so many things. It's like uh, like this grinder over here, that um, the hemp plastic grinder. This is assembled by special needs workers in is workers really? with special needs in Phoenix, Arizona. So, and we try to keep them full where they are working nonstop on our projects. So is that, is that an employee, is that not an employee? So you, you, the impact's much bigger than, there's Germany, there's Ireland, uh, there's, um, oh man, Canada, it, it, there's, it just goes on and on. And there's so many things that are working for people that are working for you directly or indirectly, where you just like, you have to kind of realize like, oh my gosh, there's really, really a lot of people, like a lot of people. And that's only on the raw part. And then you have all like the cyclones and all the other things that are made in the Philippines. The Zen You dude. make fucking cyclone? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Stop it. <laughs> You're talking about the big cyclone? The cyclones, not the not the vaporizer. The no, cyclones. no, the cyclone, the the cone. Yeah, yeah, those are all me. That's what I said when I walked. I see the I used to see the cyclones. Yeah, raw. 
I didn't know you made sock clothes, man. Yeah. Me and my friends, it was 420. I was 18 years old. We all go, you think we could fill one of these up? Go, bullshit. <laughs> you didn't even have that much weed to fill that shit up. And we you bought it and big filled it. Clone. Yeah. A big one. We filled yeah. it in that square box. It was like the Toblerone yeah, 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 yeah. box. You made that shit. Yeah, my 18th yeah. birthday. Thank you very much. That's hey, awesome. My 18th 420. Yeah. That's what the fuck I did. Smoked yeah. the cyclone with Ryan and everybody. That's awesome. Wow. That's amazing. Biggest Respect. tip in the world. Yeah. Well, biggest <laughs> tip in the fucking world. <laughs> it had to be. It had to be because the weight. The yep. sheer weight of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Josh, you've been there since I've been a kid. Yeah, man, I'm doing this for a while. <laughs> oh, man. oh, God. I love it. I didn't know that. So it's essentially hundreds of workers, about 18 years building. Yeah. Yeah, well, thousands, really. Thousands of people around the world. It's really, oh, yeah, thousands. Really thousands. Bali anyone itself. who's involved in it, you know, you're really part of the family in a way, one way or another. And so you're, and then, oh, God, then it goes on and on to all the people, you know, that work with it and ditch another the pack with booklet makers, everybody. So yeah, it's going to be thousands for sure. And they, um, yeah, and they're all, so you have that kind of responsibility. Now, here's a cool, here's something I came to understand. If let's say you, it's like a, a, a it's good and bad. When it's, when it's your factory, when you're the one who's really, it's all on you, man, and you feel it and you're visiting them and you're spending time with these people and you connect with the people, again, it's more weight and responsibility. Mm -hmm. If you're just buying it, like, like, um, you know, if, if, we're, if we were just buying this glass tube from a glass tube factory, we don't think about all the people that work in it. We don't think about any of that stuff. And you don't have that, you don't end up with the weight responsibility, just a glass tube. Mm -hmm. You buy it, you work on it, you get the quality right, the price right, and you're out. If you're making the glass tubes, it adds a whole nother level onto you where it's like, and again, more weight, more mm -hmm. responsibility, which you can hopefully turn into a good thing of more like, no, we must succeed. We must sell more glass tubes because I got all of them and their families to support. Oh, we want to make, we want to hire even more of their cousins and more of their people. We got to do it more. This is something I picked up from my grandfather. Like I didn't want to be involved in manufacturing and going to the level with all of these products. I, it's much easier to just buy it from someone and sell it. It feels so much cleaner of it. You know, you don't, you don't get as deep in there and you don't have that, that weight, weight. You don't have the weight, but grandpa taught me and he raised me, Josh, you got to make it with your, you got to make it yourself. He would say with your own two hands. I don't make them with my own two hands. But he, he, the the feeling is that mm -hmm. he wants me involved. He ran. He had a sweater factory, and he insisted he he insisted on making. He wouldn't trade. He would only make his own sweaters and sell them. He wouldn't use other factories. He would only make his own sweaters and sell wow. them. Yeah, he wanted to be involved. He wanted to have control of it. He wanted to say it has my name on there. I want to know it's right. And he insisted on doing things in that way. And he implanted that into me, so that even on things that I don't make myself. I have to fuck with it. Quality control. We have, a, we have a whole quality control department. But when it comes in, after they're done with it, it still comes to me. And I still got to fuck with it and sit there and play with it. Is that really right? Is that really right? Is it right as right can be? Is there something better I should have been done? Hey, the color looks off on that sticker. Is that sticker peeling off easy enough? That sticker, I'll tell you honestly, this product is, I'm angry about this product because this sticker right here is supposed to come off easier than it does. It's leaving a little bit of residue behind. Mm. And I know that's going to annoy you. You see? You see? It's going to annoy you, isn't it? And I knew it was going to annoy you. And I specified a certain type of sticker. It was supposed to be a certain way. And it came in without the right sticker You're on there. You're just a perfectionist. Because it's, it's not a perfectionist. I'm doing, this, it's, I'm doing it for me and for you. The same way that sticker peel annoys everyone would watching this thing. Everyone's getting annoyed by that sticker peel on every product they ever bought. It annoys me too. <laughs> I use this shit, man. I want to take that sticker off and put it in my pocket easy. I have responsibility to you and to everybody to make it as good as it can be. And if a sticker peel off leaves some freaking residue, then I fucked up and I didn't do my job right. And I can't. Well, that's what I mean. Yeah. If you know it's not going to be perfect and you know somebody can, if you know there can be a complaint, why fucking do it that way? Yeah. That's how I see everything. I just thought, I look at that as being a perfectionist for everyone's, for consumer. When I make something or think of something, yeah. I go, would I want to buy this if it wasn't me? Ooh. And that's how I look at everything. I'm like, fuck yeah, I wish. It's hard. Damn, man. That's great. You that's know? a great way to look at it. Yeah, but. Yeah, I would. <laughs> you know what I mean? So look around like, yeah, every single thing here is needed. Fuck. And you start thinking like, just for smoking? Yeah. This is the yeah. most fun part is all the stuff that you can fuck with outside. Yes. You know? Yes. Like, cool, cool glass. Cool. Yeah, use a Gatorade bottle. Like, no, I bought this really <laughs> cool thing. It has a slide. It has this worked piece. It's got thing. a double bubble, double chamber, man. Double I, filtration with exactly. an ice pack. Click it, bro. It's like, uh, it's like growing up and going, no, my squirt gun, my, my Nerf gun is way tighter than your Nerf gun. <laughs> yeah. It's not like a competition thing. It's more like, oh, wow, I love his. I got to get a cool one. New one. It's an appreciation. New, one. New tray. Yeah. New, oh, this color? 
mine. <laughs> you know? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. You know yeah. how many people are saying that right now? Where can I get that tray? <laughs> yeah, exactly, because it's fucking awesome. And it's and it's never changing. It's fun. You buy new shoes because it's like, oh, I had those shoes. Well, it's a different color. I like those. Yeah. Well, it's a new tray. It's a cool, cool, cool design. Wow. Why do you need that? You don't. But I fucking want it. I love what you said you at know? the beginning of that. I really do. I love how you're, you're does someone, would someone buy this if they weren't me? Like that mindset of like, is this actually needed by them? Mm-hmm. Is this cool enough? Would is they, would it, they? Is it cool? But I think what you're doing is the same thing I do. It's like you're, you're putting yourself back into that early state when mm-hmm. you walked into that first smoke shop, right? And it's like, and there's your product, your magic on the shelf. Would I have to buy that thing? Would I be like, oh shit, would I be, would I be giving that feeling? Mm-hmm. And if the answer is yes, then fuck yeah, we gotta do it, we gotta do it, we gotta do it, we gotta do it, we gotta do it. I don't care what the fuck it is, man, we gotta do it. I gotta make a holder that comes around and holds the cone like this with a little catcher on the bottom. Because that's fucking ridiculous. And I know that if I walked into that store and saw that, what? my mind would be fucking yep. gone, yeah, man. You, see, you read comments and you see like, I was at a smoke shop and I said, I wish I had this and look what the fuck I found. <laughs> and you get those DMs, you're like, that's what it was for. That's awesome. Yep, that's what. That's why you made this stuff. That's why you made the ring. Because how many people go, hey, I only wear these because it's fucking awesome. And I'm at parties and people are like, what? Yes. Where did you get that shit? Yeah, it's, it's just safe. fun. I've never seen a smokable ring where you can smoke through your it's damn amazing. ring and it's hygienic. Mm. <laughs> You're really thinking about everything you do, man. And it's very cool to see it. And I hope everyone in here can see it. Everything had a story. All right. On to the next fan question that you got. Who's up? Who's up, Marty? Okay. Let's see here. We got... Coming in hot. Now, this is the Dope As Usual podcast Instagram. We never fucking mention this. Go follow that motherfucker. We never mention that, huh? Yeah, we've literally never mentioned, never mentioned it. episodes never mentioned it. Really? No. <laughs> Worst marketing ever. We're good at marketing for other people, but never for ourselves. Well, it's time to do it. Yeah. Marketing yourself. No, we need to. But yeah, that's our Instagram, and that's where you ask this question. Well, yeah. What was the Instagram again? At Dope As Usual podcast. At Dope As Usual podcast. Yeah, we never said that one time. <laughs> <on the> show. <sighs> so we got Go. uh, at ASADH09. What makes your sense of style so unique compared to anyone else who's turned their business into a social media platform? Huh, that's a really good question. Um, I really, I guess. Hmm. Imagine being the person you kind of wish you always had been. Mm, so like. like you know, I grew up think, picturing these real fucking badass rock and rollers. You know, Robert Plant. You'd see fucking David Lee Ross jumping up there doing splits and a pair of fucking leopard leotards wearing this crazy fucking scarf and shit. Seeing these fucking rockers doing their thing, man. David Bowie and shit. And just the dream was like looking at them, think, look at the level of freedom they had. They could wear whatever the fuck they wanted, whenever they wanted. They could just do and, whatever and they it's wanted. Cool. They were cool as fuck. No matter what the fuck you wear, you made that shit tight. Yes. Yeah, you're right. So then it was just kind of like, it just kind of finds its way into your style. You fu- go further and further into that direction. Till next thing you know, you're just fucking leveling it. And you make, you learn, hey, how did David Lee Roth get his scarves to flow like that? And you learn it's this fucking rectangular cut. If there's a scarf behind me, I'll kind of show you. It's a rectangular cut. So instead of doing a square cut, like or, or more just a regular cut, like some scars will do, you find it, you cut it off. Did you really cut it like that because of this reason? Yes, yeah, because of this reason. Yeah, yeah. So you cut the scarf. And the man's it, attention and to detail is just off the chain. You can pull it long, man. And you can make it flow like a fucking... Why, oh, yes. my God. <laughs> you really... Yeah, because if it was a square, it wouldn't tail. Right. You're trying to get it to get this crooked and these snaps on the side. You know? And it's so, yeah, it's all about shit like that. But you're just trying to... you just... I'm just having fun. Best thing you could have said. Yeah. Great. There's the trailer. <laughs> <laughs> Done. Because <laughs> truly, you see it, though. <laughs> you, know I mean? you see it in like, yeah, I'm just having fun. I made 85 fucking things. And the story behind it, it makes me more stoked. Yeah. Knowing that, oh, no, let me ask you, what do you want? Two weeks, I'll have it. What's your favorite? That's what you said. Now you're reading comments going, what was that? You like that? Okay, gotcha. It's the yeah, same yeah, yeah, yeah. thing, except virtual. I read my comments all the time to look for something. Peel. I'm looking for something. I'm trying to look for someone who says to me, dude, my tray exploded. I'm like, it is? Click DM. Tell me what happened. Tell me what happened. Tell me every detail. You got pictures of it? I need to see this. You're not lying to me, are you? You're not fucking with me. Show me what happened. And then it's like, if it's real, which most of the time it isn't. Upgrade. But I, yeah, of course, give, hit me up. Let me see a picture. Oh, my God. How did that happen? Tell me the truth. I'm sending you a new tray anyway. Tell me how it happened. Did you drop it? Come on. Tell me the truth, man. Tell me every little detail. I swear I'm sending you a tray anyway. Just tell me what happened. And you just get the information. Then the next thing you know, I'm on the phone screaming at people. Not in a necessarily negative way. We let this guy down, man. What do you mean the magnet popped off? The magnet popped off. The magnet popped off, man. 
Do you understand? This guy yes. wanted this. He saved up for this. And the fucking magnet popped off. Do you know what you did to him? And the guys are like, Josh, exactly calm down. Like, though. Yes. You have to think that way. Dude, you ruined his fucking night, you dude. The, we, had, we were paid to do one fucking job. Exactly. We had one fucking job. Make that thing right. Make him fucking happy. And you made him unhappy. Like They're like, oh, I'm sorry, Josh. I'll do feel? better. Will you really, though? It isn't about Josh. It's about that dude you just fucked over. That's what I'm saying. How do you think that guy feels like, oh, I got the dud? Yeah, I waited for how long and I got the There's shit one? Fucking no. Fuck. No, 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 That's no. what I think about shirts. Like, oh, that's a defect. No. Nope. It's small. Put it to the side. Yeah. Because you don't want to be that one guy that waited. You remember being like just waiting for yes. whatever in the yes. mail and you get it. Like, are you fucking kidding me? Two more weeks I have to send this back and it's, oh my God. Do people know? No. I'm sorry. Do people know that you used to sit there and pluck out the hairs? Oh, each every hat. I used to get tell this, me about this. So there was a the pile. threads. I used to get tweezers. Me and Rosie would take eight or nine hours. Every time we got hats, we tweezer every fucking piece every of string. Every fucking off. string. Every one pile this big. And I know it's not a lot, but after like eight hours of little baby hair yeah. strings, that's a big pile. Yeah, it is. And me and Rosie would every time just go, wow, eight hours for this. But I never had to complain about it. I hat. wish you would have saved those. Oh, oh that would be kind of cool, huh? God. God. That's saved actually, the whole pile of them. <laughs> that's a good idea. I never thought about stuff like that. We didn't I was think about that back rush, then. You know, like, get it out. No, more shit, more stuff. But I finally got an employee, dude. I haven't packed an order in two, over two weeks. Good for you. It's so weird. That's fucking awesome. It's so fucking weird because <laughs> I'm a perfectionist, but we're like, oh, you got it down perfect. Not one messed up order yet. Wow. Oh, my God. I forget hey, like there's going to be mistakes. Yeah, for sure. We know it. But right? it's great. Yeah. As long as it's been too, you know what you're doing. Yes. It's amazing. Yeah, but you have that, you're doing that same thing I'm doing when you're sitting there plucking out strings. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we're in the same, we're doing the same thing. It's about pride in your product. Yeah. yeah. I'm making people happy and you can't make mm -hmm. them happy if you just, if you give them crap. Mm -hmm. If you, if you fuck up, I mean, I, I, like I say it all the time, I'd rather lose money than you get pissed. Yes. Or feel like, cause they're going to, you didn't make this paper. You didn't pack this cone. You think you were in the factory? No, you weren't. But when they go, this thing's fucked up. Fucking Josh. Fucking Josh. I knew that fucking guy was a piece of shit. Look how yep. he, look at his look hair. At, yep. Look at his list to his left. Fuck this guy. He's a piece of shit. I knew he's like, a piece uh, of shit. Oh, no, yep. no, no. Oh, dude, no. I swear <laughs> to God, I tried my best. So I hope this is the PSA for everyone out there that you can't be perfect. Because other people, unless it's you, unless you want it back, because you'll do it perfect. Yeah, I will. But there's no ship way. It, something's going to happen in shipping. I'm like, no. Thank you. No. That's why I'm so meticulous <laughs> with packing shit. Because I go, no, UPS workers, don't give a fuck. They're going to throw this thing. Can I throw it? <laughs> if I could throw it, it doesn't break, we could ship it. Yeah, That's yeah. how I feel. Because you have to, you can't be the kid at home going, what the fuck? I got the <laughs> shitty shirt. It's not... It's the it's the world's worst thing, and then they think of your image and your face. You want them to be <laughs> happy. Yes, I'm trying to make people happy. You're being happy, not just like oh fucking Josh. Were you <laughs> when you me. first started Raw? Were you already so savvy in business that you came into it with a team, or was it just you doing it until you scaled up into a team? By that point, I already had a team because of elements and juicy J's. Because of elements and juicy mm -hmm. J's. It's a, I, I look to look at it as a ladder, which is a key piece for anyone. If you look at where I am now. And where I began, if you and if you're here looking at me over here, it looks impossible. It just looks impossible, man. Look at that. Oh, I'll never get there. Yeah, because I, I wasn't here though. It's just a fucking ladder. You take one one rung, one step oh. at a time. It was you know trading papers, wholesaling other people's papers, doing any little thing you can. It's another step, another step. Let's customize it. Will you let me customize? I met a guy who was taking was making custom packs in Alcoy. Can you make me this? Can you make me that? Yes, cool. We got that. It's another step. And another one, and another one, and another one. And sometimes you fall down the ladder, and that's okay. You get back on, you go up again, is what we do. Yeah. Until eventually you end up at the top of the fucking ladder. And I got a better answer for you, which is something I, which is something I really need to talk about for one moment. I learned too much of my life through rolling paper art. I really have. Right? There's a, I've got books on rolling paper art. This is something we do in Alcoy. Maybe it's just not normal, but it, it's still something we do. There's one pack of papers that has resonated with me for too long. It's called Los Años, and it's a pack, the artwork on the pack, imagine this, it shows the life of a person. They start off, so zero, it shows a little baby, and it's a man, a picture of a man, and he's growing up, getting older and older and older, 10, 20, and it's a, it shows as if, as if it's like a chart. And at very, at, right there when he's at 50, he's at the very top of his life, and then from there it's just down, down, down until he goes right back into like an infantile type state. And you see that. And this is implanted in my brain as this is it, Josh. You go up and then down. So now I'm at the fucking right there at the very top crescent part right there. And it's all downhill from here. So what do you got to do? Well, 
nothing I can do other than go down. I'm not going to go down in a pile of flames like certain other people might have. Um, some people don't like, oh, actually, I won't mention anything negative. Um, your job is to propagate the knowledge you gained on the way up so that it makes it easier for the people behind you to come up as well. And hopefully you can propagate it in such a way that it adds on some levels that you really want people to do. Like I always tell people, I'm going to help you and then you're going to fucking become a huge success. And when you do, you're going to give back for real, much more than I ever gave. You're going to next level my shit to the fucking, you're going to make fun of me. You're going to call me a piece of poop for not giving back enough at all. You're going to fucking bring that shit up there, man. They're like, okay. And that's kind of the part of the deal I make with people when I'm really going to give them advice, like strong advice and help them out. I'm like, all right, man. You know, you, you just gotta, you gotta level me up to the fucking laugh at me as you, as you step on my fucking, on my tombs, on my, on my stepping stones behind me. Just laugh at me, dude, because I knew nothing compared to you. You are smarter. You got more talent. You got more skills. You're going to fucking house me, man. I got no chance against you. Here's some information. What else do you need? How else can I help you? How can I help you elevate? Learn from my fucking mistakes. You don't got to make them too, man. It makes it easier to get up if you learn from mine than if you have to learn yourself that same mistake that I made. Shit. I want to teach people as much as possible to bring them with me. The goal is, of course, the real goal would be so that in the end, you got more friends. You know what I mean? Yeah. You got more people up there with you hanging out and having fucking fun, telling stories, shooting shit like we're doing now. You know, I remember when I got you a car alarm. Viper. Viper car alarm. <laughs> Push trees a house. <laughs> because I saw this beautiful Monte Carlo you had. And I was he like, me that. I'm like, got an oh, alarm? shit. No. Like, that car's a goner, man. Three days later, I'm like, what the fuck is this in the mail? <laughs> well, sent me a fucking sick-ass car alarm. I had my cousin install and everything. I remember, it's just loud. I was scared, man, because my friends used to boost cars. And I was like, oh, shit, they would have been all over that car. Man. Oh, my God, they would have been on it. They would have been following you home. They would have been trying to find some way mm -hmm. to get your car. Like, no, 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 I got to get you an alarm. I don't want you losing that car. It's heartbreaking to lose a car. Mm -hmm. I remember, I, I'll never forget that shit. I remember, what, I remember opening it and going, Viper. <laughs> and going, Josh! This is the fucking alarm you said you were going to send. You really sent the shit. Yeah, I don't want you to lose your Monty, man. I remember that. I remember I inst my cousin installed it. Because like, who said this? Josh. Josh ruined the paper. <laughs> I like him. <laughs> remember my cousin, he's a car. He goes, I like that. That's very fucking awesome that he did that. Like, yeah. Right? I, I, I don't, because I know about car. I mean, he's like, this will get stolen in five fucking yeah, seconds. Five seconds. Like, all right, all right, thanks. But that was just one little thing. And one other thing. You said to me, I was on my apartment on the Da Vinci First year I moved there, I was in my bed when it was against the wall. I'm just saying this for my brain. And then you were telling me like, because there was a time where I would, I mean, we all are young or not even young. Maybe you're older and you learn. But there was a time where I was like, now nah, fuck that shit. Make it better. Or no, that's not how I want it to work. This is not how I want it. You're like, yo, you have to calm down, breathe. Sometimes I'm like, Josh, I know how to handle my life, fool. But you're like, no, no, no. Thomas, this is when I'm going to go. I'm like, oh my God, Josh, what are you going to tell me? <laughs> and you're like, sometimes when I wake up, I feel better when I go, just start from your toes oh, and yeah, work your yeah. way up to your head. Are you appreciative of your feet and how they can help you in the day? Are you appreciative? And then I get out of bed and say, thank you for every part of my body that works. Yeah. And you go, then you feel a lot more relieved and grateful. And I'm like, all right, Josh, okay, fuck it. <laughs> and then I did this shit one day. Yeah. And went, I love that. Fucking Josh, man. <laughs> Fucking Josh knows everything. I don't, though, no, man. No, I'm saying the things that I am lacking, like, I saw that, yeah. and I see it, and I know how I can help. That's a goal. Not like, don't fuck. Stop being so fucking negative. You didn't do that. You're like, hey, try this. Yeah. I remember where I was sitting when I'm like, what? Because it what worked for me, it man. Worked. That's why. It's like, wow, I fucking love this. It's just weird shit I pick up along the way, and I just want to propagate it. I want to teach everyone all the stuff I picked up along the way. Mm -hmm. To make it easier for them. Plus, I got to tell you, it's a very selfish benefit for me. If I can teach people all this stuff I learned along the way, every little trick, every little fucking thing, then in a way, I get to live forever. forever. <laughs> yeah, I was like, you live on forever. <laughs> this tech, the Josh tech, that's going to be around for 200 fucking years. Well, that's all we got, man. Yeah. If, if that, if that thing of sharing knowledge, I'll be gone. There's no doubt. But the knowledge <laughs> lives on. Mm -hmm. And that's beautiful. That's all I can ask for. It's all like being a writer. Yeah. Like your shit lives forever. A storyteller lives forever yeah. in some way, shape, or form. Shakespeare's shit still gets made now. today. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? You knew the story of the, the the rolling paper beef 
From the 15, oh. 1600s, probably. <laughs> 1300s. Yeah, what is it? it goes, the, the real beef began, would have been about 18, 18, oh, 18 early, The beef, the real beef oh. began in the 1800s. It would have started earlier than that, but the real beef would have begun when you get to the 1800s, especially during industrialization, like the coming of um, modern machinery and stuff. It got worse and worse. But there's the first trademarks ever filed in Spain. I believe it was the first five of them ever filed in Spain were for rolling papers. Because people were competing with each other so much. Really? They were all stealing each other's brands. So the first thing was fucking rolling papers. Is there a reason why Spain seems to be the homeland for this? Yes. Why? Is it the trees? No. It's, um, I'm going to do the short version or we'll be here all night, uh, man. The short version is, and this is part of this is folklore and completely wrong. The Chinese invented paper. Arab traders, or actually, was, I don't know if they were traders at the time, but there was a, a battle between a group of Arabs and Chinese. We're going back, you know, I don't know, more than a thousand years probably. I don't even, I'm not even sure off the top of my head. I have it all written down somewhere. So this battle happens. The Chinese lose and are captured by the Arabs. The Arabs make a deal, or the Chinese make a deal with them. We'll teach you how to make paper if you let us go. Good, smart motherfuckers, mm. man. Right, really smart move. They teach them, and they teach them how to make paper. Now this comes back to the to the Arab world, which was, um, I think it would have been the the center of civilization at the time, and the whole process of paper making begins and really takes root and becomes more perfected. When the Moors came and conquered part of Spain, they brought with them paper, and they set up the world's first European paper mill in Yativa, Spain, which is right outside of Alcoy, and it didn't operate right because it was too much rain. Back then, there's no electricity. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're relying on the sun and the wind to dry your paper, and you need running water to power the turns, the, the, the turnstiles you're going to be moving in order to make the paper. And the baton, which is this big hammer that comes up and comes down, bam, mashes, bam, mashes. Because you've got to mash that stuff, you know, to make paper. You're taking plants one way or another, and you're mashing the shit out of them to smash them down into cellulose, what I call cellulose and fiber. It's all really cellulose, but I call it cellulose and fiber because there's no there's differentiations between it. And now you take that and you're going to you spread it out one way or another on a screen. Get it into the sun and wind in order to get it dry. Take it off the screen and you have essentially your paper. That's essentially it, right? This is the old, 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 old wow. way. All right. Now that's happening. They bring it from Yativa to Alcoy and set up the real world's first European paper mill operational, operating well in Alcoy. And this becomes the papermaking capital of all of Europe. And really the papermaking capital. What year or what century is this? Oh, okay. Now we're going back to about the, it would have been no, 1500s, 1600s, right around there, when a lot of this is happening. It, uh, when the paper mills were really getting going, you're going back, yeah, they got better and better in 1600s, 1700s. They continually got better and improved and improved. Uh, the, the, um, the Alcoyanos rose up to the, to the sign of St. George and chased the Moors out. This is the story. And they still have a party about it to this day. It's a party of peace and celebration. It's really cool. And um, it's called the Moros de Cristianos Festival. I, I actually have to protest at the festival. They do things I don't like there as well. So I go Bulls. there sometimes. No, well, just things I don't like. I don't okay. mean, nothing negative. Right. And I'm trying to change their ways. And they're listening to me. And it's going to work out. Um, so this is paper, paper making is part of the history of Alcoy. You can't study paper without passing through Alcoy. You can't study rolling paper or anything without passing through Alcoy. So Spain really is the history of rolling paper. It's amazing. Yeah. What a fucking history lesson right now of something I actually like. Yeah, now imagine how this. Cool is imagine that? how you <laughs> feel like this. Picture this. As I go around through Alcoy, you're going around, and on the right, down by the river, because it's all mountains and ravines, you look down by the ravines, eventually, you look far enough, you follow the river, all you're seeing are old paper mills. I mean, old paper mills, you know? Oh, and then I'll be with one of the um, historians, and he'll explain to me, oh, yes, this one is from 1742. And you're like, okay, that's older than America. He's like, yeah, so? Okay, oh, right, come show it to me. We see what's left of it. You find some derelict thing, you find something in the dirt, and then eventually we'll take a little... Um, a little rock from one of the foundations, not from it, it's held on the ground. We don't take it off. You pick it up and we bring it to the new factory, planted in the four corners of the factory, different rubble you pick up from the older ones, just to connect the present to the past and to pay homage to the ancestors. Now, all of this I'm telling to you is because imagine if, as you walked in here to do this podcast, you were literally walking on 
the graves of the people who had done podcasts before you oh hundreds of years ago. And then you finally step into the room to go do your podcast. You get a different feeling, man. Yeah, it's like, I get that. It's a lot like a whole, oh, but you also realize, you recognize the briefness and the lightness of it all. That you are just one link in that chain, man. And all you can do is be the best link you can be. There were all those chain pieces before you. And you know damn well that someone else is going to be walking on your shit, laughing at your rubble, picking up pieces from your factory, and planting it into their own in the future. And you just look at it like that. And it changes the way you feel about so many things. Wow. And gives you perspective. I love that. Yeah. So, yeah. That was <sighs> fucking awesome. Dude. I'm just thinking of, like, Yep, that's exactly how life works. It's such a brief moment they're actually here. Yeah, so now based on that and based on everything I fucking rambled about, and sorry for rambling too long, but I You're do good. that. And I'm holding back on smoking. As you imagine, if you let me go, it's going to keep going. It's, um, if you were going to give a message to your, let's go back, let's go really back, to your 10-year-old self, right? And you could, you see him there. There's little Thomas, and he's right there. And you know all this information you have now. What's the first thing you're going to say to, to 10-year-old Thomas? I've been asked this, something like this before. It's the same answer. It's like, it's going to be okay. It'll get better. It's all I ever think. Like, yo, it sucks dick right now, but just wait. That's how I always think I about everything until I was of, able to take care of myself. When were you able to take care of yourself? 16. Okay, so now you got 18-year-old Thomas. You got to give him a different message. There he is, and he's starting to try to make a hustle and trying to make himself get keep, forward. Keep it going. Keep it going. That's it. There's no advice I would give to my 18-year-old self because that motherfucker was smart as shit and brought it up to where we were at. And from 18 and on, it's just been the same fucking thing nonstop, except, the you know, I stopped selling certain things. And that's it. And it started going in another direction. I met, Into this, I met you guys a year into this, you know? It's yeah. about a decade this November that I've been doing this, which is insane for me to even think. That it's been a decade. It's been a fucking decade. Yeah. Wow. That's great. It's weird. But the 18-year-old thing, just, I don't think I'd give any different advice because I fucking loved it. And all the way up, wouldn't change anything. If I can give advice to my 28-year-old self, yeah. that's a whole different story. What is it? Mine is like, yo, shut the fuck up. And start working a lot harder. Quadruple what you're doing. Stop hanging out. And just work as much as you possibly can. Because oh, I waited until wow. I was like 30 to really like, I'm going to film every single day. I'm going to edit every day, all day, every single thing, everything. I don't care about hanging out. And that's when everything that, just Is that skyrocketed. only because you realized you enjoyed it better I, doing this than that? I realized I, I was going to just plateau forever and never continue with making better content doing something better. If I was just like, yo, let's hang out all day. I'll get my stuff done tomorrow. No, it's like, yeah, I'll see you guys this weekend. I'm going to do like 25 hours of editing and filming today because I don't care. I know it's more than a day, obviously, but all day, every day. I don't care what we're doing. It was when the pandemic happened and I realized like, I got to start actually making money so I can help people out when stuff gets bad. Yeah. Because it got bad and I went, thank God I'm actually making money finally. Yeah. Because before that, I, I would have been, what am I going to do? I'm I done. know. It's over. Move back. So that's really what made me think, because I always did everything for free, man. Because I, I love it. It's so fun. But it's more of, I have to start establishing things and start doing things for myself that could help me help the former me in five years. Go, hey, don't worry. All that shit. Here's a camera. Hey, I got you. Help me do some stuff. I'll pay you rent. That's the thing. Like, the, the you know what I mean? There's always going to be the younger version of you coming out and you see it and go, I can help you because I know where you're at. And it fucking sucks where you're at. If I had someone going, here's $10,000. Start your business. Oh my fucking God. Like, that would have been crazy. Like I want to be to the point where I can see it, spot it, and just be fine to go here. What can you do? Go for it. You know? I understand, but you're missing a piece there. What? Because like from the place you're talking to me about, I know where you're talking to me from, and it's, I, I feel what you're, what you're feeling, but I believe that a lot of it is because you recognize how much you actually enjoy doing this. Because I know you, and I know you yeah. like sitting here right now, and I know you love this. So I think what a lot of what you're saying also that you need to clarify because people don't understand because the message isn't just to work harder. The message is, hey, man, recognize if you like doing something, which you like doing, 
go the fuck into it full bore. Don't you fucking stop. Mm -hmm. You fucking dedicate 25 hours a fucking day to it because you love it and it's going to be gone in a fucking moment. And yeah, you can make money off. You can do all these things. But if you're, if you're half hearting at doing it, if you're fucking around with your friends too much and not giving enough to that passion of yours, your passion, mm -hmm. that's well, where I was. you're wasting your gift. Yes. That's where I was. Yeah. I was sitting w realizing I didn't do anything productive today. And it's not, it's like, oh, you're making weed videos. No, it's not. I'm making weed videos. It's, there's businesses behind this. I don't get any revenue. I have to find a way to do this so I can continue to do what I fucking love doing. Yeah. And that's how it's funneling and helping. Like you're saying, how are you doing story time? Like, no, we're, I'm paying for it. Because I fucking love it, even though I'm not getting paid in the back end. There's no, there's nothing coming from it. I'm not getting YouTube. Like, I fucking love it Yo, so he's paying much. for all this himself. Just, you know, we had a yeah. conversation off camera. Yeah. He's paying for all this himself. He's doing to. something tomorrow that is, I won't spoil it anyway. Yeah. It's fucking amazing. And he paid for it all himself. Yeah, because it's going to be that much fucking doper when people watch and go, oh my God. You see the passion you have for this though? Yeah. You yeah. feel that? Of course. I, I love this shit. Yeah. I just want it to be like in five years ago, look how sick we thought that was. Look what this shit we're doing now. And just look back and see little grips of upgrades. Yeah. Thomas, we're the same, man. Yeah. Exactly the same. We're doing the same exact thing just with different products. We're going down different paths, taking the same fucking, driving the same car. I don't know how to say it ready better than that, yeah. man, but that's really it. So, yes. And there's your advice to people. I think it's, I think it's fucking beautiful. Pretty good fucking interviewer, Josh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're pretty good at asking questions here, Josh. <laughs> Damn, I loved it. That was great. This is like the modern innovator, though. This really didn't exist so much before the internet where you could like, oh. you know, I'm really into weed. Now I can pave a way to make an awesome career that's going to then trickle down to a bunch of other people through it because I love it. Yeah. You know, they could teach business classes about the shit you guys so are so fucking about. lucky I started doing this shit when I started yeah. doing it. As the, it was meant to happen because if any you know, other time I gotta tell you have. something else. I don't think you did anything wrong. I know I know you're you're judgy on your on your previous self on your 28 yourself. I I feel it, but I can tell you from experience, if you didn't spend that time doing that, you'd be mad at yourself for that. You would have been like, I never had that experience. I never did that. Get it? And you, then you'll be fucking 80 years old thinking with the regret. I didn't hang out enough. Right. I, I wasted my whole life working. You're going to say something like that to yourself. I experienced both now. Right. So now you experience both. You did it yeah. exactly right. I, you, I, didn't, I, you got it. I see you what did. you're saying. That would be my advice is step up now. Yeah. Start now a year early. It's, there's always times. You've seen it. We've known each other for a long time. So yeah. you even told me five, six years ago, you got to stop showing weed. <laughs> yeah. You told me that. He told me that when I moved here, you got you to gotta somehow... Be the weed guy without showing packs. Yeah. And be, what I'm doing now is what you told me to do. <laughs> yeah. Exactly what I'm doing now. I told you, mm. like, I got to be able to be the weed guy and not have to be the weed guy. Right. That's exactly that's what I'm That's the first to thing do. I said when I met you. Like, yep. That's what he told me before I moved to LA. Because they that. fucking hate on us. Yeah. Before I moved to LA, he told me that like, you got, you have this, it's not the weed, it's you. So make sure yeah. it's, it's what people want to get. Exactly what I'm trying to transition to is exactly <laughs> what you told me. So that's what I'm saying. Like I said earlier, like, you know, be grateful. Just think. You've said a lot of things to me that I've taken and actually used and that's they've awesome. worked. That's so awesome. thank you for that. I really do. And also when I try to, or when I did stop eating meat and shit, you really helped me out. All right. Yeah. Helped me out tremendously because this full, uh, how long have you been vegan? 20 something years. Oh, yeah. Jesus. Yeah. He showed me his first person I was going to eat the opium food. You'll talk, touch it with your hand. Yeah. I even thought like. <laughs> Yo, you don't got a plate. I just remember him. Well, yeah, I'm just eating. Just, oh God, you fold it. There's a technique, but yeah, I know. But I just to me, I'm like, oh, it's medieval. It's like going to medieval times. Like, yeah, jousting, man. Fucking eat with your hands. I thought it was tight, you know. But that's when I thought, like, yeah, Josh is uh, onto some other things. He's yeah. lived his life, and he's looking at me and going. I know where you're at. I know how you're thinking. And here's my advice. And yeah. you did. And people did that for me. But thank you. Because I try to do it for people that I see too. It's just, why have why why watch someone struggle when you know what the fuck they need to hear? They might not take it into consideration yet. But man, you told me that shit six years ago. I still I just remember it. Yeah. Brought up specifically because I, I remember it and I think about it. Yeah. So yeah, thanks. That helps. You're it, welcome. It, it man. did help. It did help. And I did a great thing, which is fucking because if I help somebody. And I elevated you in any way. That's fucking awesome. Mm -hmm. You know, when, when I was um, younger, I would get depressed over shit. My I'm not. My life is a fucking waste. Blah blah. What am I doing? Oh, all that kind of shit. You know what I mean? And not like I was much younger, but it was a while ago. Nowadays, I, time is relative, right? 
what I would tell myself once the rolling papers began moving better and better, I was like, hey, Josh, because all I was really all hiding my hat on. Hey, you made probably a million people around the world enjoy their smoke a little bit more than before. That's an awesome. You basically increased happiness. You did more than anyone else you actually know. Isn't that true, Josh? And I'll be laying there in bed to tell myself, huh, yeah, I guess that is actually true. Yep, I guess so. Yeah, that's actually true. You just do things. Yeah, I yeah. could have been an accountant. I could have done, which would have had no real impact in increasing a lot of human beings' happiness, right? I really could have been a fucking accountant. And instead, I managed to really make a lot of people happier. And yeah, well, the, the people, the actual direct lives that I'm, that I'm trying to save, that's amazing too. But the overall impact that I think that I've had so far and will continue to have until I'm gone is a very positive one on humanity, which is like the real goal. Because mm-hmm. I, I think that's what we're supposed to do. A hundred percent. Right? You're supposed to leave it better. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, what yeah, I yeah. think. I fucking hate people litter. Here's a PSA. I don't even have to ask you. Stop littering. And I know you hate motherfuckers that litter too. Yeah. Please stop littering. Stop. That's one thing that I can't stand, but it's like there's one thing that we can try. How about this? Make it okay to go, hey, you're an asshole for littering. <laughs> check your fr- I check my friends all the time. Like, so what the fuck are you picking up? What are you doing? I can't stand looking at it. And that's just, I know it's kind of like, not a positive thing, but it's more of like tough love. Yeah. If that's one thing we could do, and this one little message anybody could do, if you litter, just remember me and Josh would, would, <laughs> would not want to be your homie. We wouldn't want to hang If out we here. saw you just throw trash at the fucking ground. No, I wouldn't be able to look at you the same. Thank you. I exactly. Be able to it changes my like, perspective. Yeah, I'd be like, okay, what, what happened? Mm-hmm, like, Oh, so that's you know, how you think? No, it's a lack of empathy. Ex- that's what it's I'm really saying. What somebody is. else pick it up, but what about that person? Ooh, that, that, what, what about person, that man? guy? That could be me on trash patrol for getting fucking pulled over, fucked up, or something. Because I don't want to fucking be there picking up your trash. Come on, yeah. like it's um, it's yeah, it's a small, simple thing. But like you're but saying, it shows a lack of empathy because yeah. it is a lack of empathy. Yeah, you're completely right. And before we get on to the next thing, you said the reason why. You have been vegan. You are vegan so long. He's like, bring some of the podcast. He says it's it's empathy, love right? and empathy. Yeah, yeah. People always ask, but like, yo, why, why, how, and why? Because you remember when I was eating yeah. shit, you were never like, hey, you know, you're fucking up, right? <laughs> it was never that. You never once said that shit to me. It doesn't work. Yeah, I'm when gonna, I, I'm not going to change you over. It it's has, not. It's, it has to be you. Yeah. Yeah, I told Mario, I told him, I was driving on the uh, on your grapevine, and I saw all these cows, the sun was out, and it was overcast, but the sun came out, and I saw it, I go, how the fuck can I eat these fucking things? Yeah, they're just beautiful. They're so cool. They're like, so cool. What am I doing? Yeah. And then I ate meat and everything that night, and got food poisoning, first time in my life. Wow. And I went, there's my sign. I said I was going to stop, how could That's I awesome. do it? I ate it that night, went, never again. And that was six, seven years ago. That was the universe yelling at you for sure. Exactly. Yeah. I've never had food poisoning before. I was sick, throwing up for yeah. three days. No, the universe went, was telling you no more. There you it go. Over. That's your fault. Yeah. And I thought like, nope, I can't ever do it again. And then, for the, and I talked to you. And like, Jeez, man, the dairy. Hmm. You got to stop. You got And then I looked yeah. into it a little more. And you've helped me a lot, actually, man. Just, <laughs> just, just by having random phone calls. I was talking about random yeah. things. So, yes, that's another thing. But that's same thing for you. It was cows. It was too much. Is that for you too? It was cows. Yeah, my motorcycle broke down next to a uh, cow uh, cow pasture, and there was a tree that overhang the road and the cows. Like the cows on one side, the fence is right up against the tree, and I'm on the other side. I'm there for hours till my friend came with the park to get my old bike I built myself going again, and I'm just hanging out with the cows all day, connecting with them. And one mama cow, I'm making cow jokes at them. I had nothing else to do, right? So, and one of them bumped at one another one and I started going move over right and the cow like turns to me and turns and walks away and goes over the little hill and I was like it's something I said sorry honey you know she's gone she comes back a minute later with her baby and she pushes her baby up to the fence to say hi to me so I'm petting the cow and I'm really looking at their eyes you know and you're looking right at them they're looking right at you and I'm seeing a nose two eyes ears mouth I'm like oh these guys are exactly the same as me aren't they like, oh, yeah, shit. I'm like, this is really us, isn't it? This is a real living thing, just like me. Okay, you get the connection, you get the whole thing. Get my bike going again, make my way up to Tallahassee, Florida. I go down and I order myself a cheeseburger. And I take one bite into that cheeseburger and it happened to be cooked extra rare. And the blood comes running out of it. Right, same thing, Thomas. Same thing, man. Because the universe sends signals and it sent you and me the same ones. 
and the blood runs out onto the fucking plate. And I looked down at there and I was like, oh, fuck. Like, what the fuck? Fuck. And I'm picturing the baby cow and the mama cow <laughs> and how much I really just betrayed her and the whole thing. I'm just like, I was fucked. I was just fuckity fucked. I didn't finish the burger. I got that message right. And I was just like, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. And then later on, if I ever even thought about it, I would go into like the body's going into convulsions. Like, I can't, I can't, I can't. No, no. It's like, oh, sorry, cow. I don't love you anymore. I'm sorry. It's okay. I'm just going to eat you. Like, no, man. No, 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 no. Fuck that. And I got more and more stories just like that. One animal at a time until eventually I was just done. And you can't go back. I, all those years at Earth Save, that I was on the board of Earth Save in Canada, I learned two things. One, you can't convert someone. If they're not already vegan, you can say whatever you want to them, but they can only do it to themselves. You can share with them information, and when someone is ready to receive that information, they will receive it. And until then, you're just fucking hopeless. And the other thing I learned was the people that became vegan based on the study we funded, the people that became vegan that stayed vegan the most were the ones who, based on the survey that I worked on, their final answer for why they were vegan was love. It was love and empathy. The ones who are, I look at that cow and I love that cow. I see the cow. I see the, cre the life inside. I know that it's got feelings. I know it's got emotions. I know it really feels pain. And it's scared beyond as much as I would be scared when it's about to die and it's watching its kids get taken away from it. And all that stuff, it really feels it. And once you've got that, you're like, oh, fuck. Yep. What do I do now, man? Give me some fucking soybeans because I'm fucked. Give me some black bean burgers. <laughs> Because it's got to be better than the pain I'm going to feel if I eat that thing. So fuck it. Give me the soybeans. I'll be good. I'll be good. And, and then you learn to enjoy being vegan. You learn, wow, I actually get to taste more flavors. Wow, it's actually a good thing. I think I tell my friends, like, you love steaks, right? Have you ever just cooked a steak? Like, no. I season it. Put all my stuff. I'm like, you mean the vegetables? <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> so what tastes bomb is like some salt yeah. and green onion to squash, motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's what, in my head, that got to, as soon as I, since that day happened, I was done. Yeah. I remember I looked at it and go, I remember the picture of the cow with the fucking sun hitting going, how could I do that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow, uh, what a wild story, yeah, man. I is. can't believe it. It was almost the same shit. Yeah. Yeah, it was the universe telling me, like, don't be an asshole. Yeah. And then when you didn't quite listen, it got started That's what yelling happened. at I you. did it three hours later. I did it again. Yeah, like I'm going to yell at you now. First time in my life, I ate shrimp. I don't like shrimp. <laughs> I ate, I'm like, fuck it, I eat shrimp and burger. And I got <laughs> sick as fuck. I was at P.F. Chang's. Fuck P.F. Chang's. I got sick as hell. Um, yeah, I just wanted to ask. Why? Because you have told me so much since I've known yeah. you. And every time I'm like, what do you mean you're eating paste? Paste? What kind of paste? I'm like, Ugh. <laughs> I was eating McDonald's at the stuff. I was still yeah. going hard. I was still at that stage. But you never once like shamed me for it. No, Ever can't. once. Not never once. Me, I will say that. Any good. It doesn't help. No. It's like, yeah, try it or don't. It's all good. Yeah, it'd be great if it, if it worked. If it worked, I'd be, ah, oh, but it doesn't. It doesn't. No, it it's, doesn't. Um, some, at some point, everyone feels it. I think that um, anyone who isn't vegan, is one thing I've learned later on in life, they're, they're going to wish they were. It's just because my non, it just, you end up with more health problems. You end up with heart attacks and all that kind of uh, stuff. Yeah, that too. It's just, I mean, I don't know why Marty stopped eating meat, but to me, it's like, I mean, I stopped eating meat when I was five because I saw the Foster Farms truck and go, why are there chickens in there? I asked my mom, she's like, they're going to go get killed. I'm, like, I'm done. <laughs> I didn't eat meat for a week. And I was a kid. My mom's like, there's no way. There's no mm -hmm. way you're going to, and that's the first time I ever went, you want to fucking eat? this thing i like and it, it ruined my brain so from a kid i remember thinking like i can't do this yeah but i still did and then marty i didn't even know i knew marty for a year and a half and i'm like you want this chicken sandwich still? he goes oh bro i don't eat meat yeah. <laughs> like what since when it's like since most like, my, my life, life. Yeah. Like, oh, okay shit. <laughs> i'm gonna give you one beautiful point to close this with Go. right in the future it's unrealistic that this isn't true in the future we will all be vegan and i'll tell you why Imagine this, all right? We're going to go with Star Trek. Sorry if you like Star Wars. I love that too. We're going with Star Trek. You're flying through space at warp factor fucking nine, right? You're flying, oh, we're on our way to planet Zeta, fucking Theta. And here we are on our way and you get hungry. What do you do? Press a button to someone down on the meat deck who's going to kill a fucking cow and, and grind you up a burger? That's not happening. There's no fucking way that's happening. It's going to be some kind of synthesized plant protein. The the whole spaceship is probably going to be filled with plants to give us oxygen that we need as we go. And it's all going to be right there. Here's your vegan burger or whatever the hell it is you actually want. And it's going to be also designed in different ways, but it's all going to be plant-based. It's going to happen that way. I think it's the easiest sustainable way to. There's going to be no animals to eat on that plane. I'm sorry, on the plane, on the spaceship. There's no fucking way, man. Yeah. 
The future is vegan. We will be vegan, all of us, eventually. It's just, and that's just natural. And it's going to be great. It really is. It's going to be great. <laughs> we're going to be on spaceships eating fucking soy burgers. We're going to be on spaceships <laughs> eating fucking soy burgers. It's going to be amazing, And there's going to be six comments going, these guys got hot. <laughs> <laughs> That's the, that's, the, that's the name of this, like, yeah. soy burgers and spaceships. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, before we get out of here, I have one thing left to do. Sure. All right? It's called, who are you in the 90s? We have these questions, and I'm going to say one thing and another thing. You pick what you would go with, not based on your now knowledge, but Ooh. based on you in the 90s. Oh, God. I know, because he brings you to a different time. Like, yeah. Oh, I thought... Different back then. Okay, I was an idiot see. back then. That's yeah. how I feel about myself. So, so I, I like to ask this. Okay. All right. All right hold Are on. you ready? Yep. All right. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. 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 Very basic questions, but you don't have to say why. But if you have a reason why, let us know. Okay. VH1 or MTV? MTV. Oh, uh, not even a second hesitation. <laughs> it's an easy one. It's back when the world premieres and, and music videos. Yeah. Like yeah. yeah it yeah. was the best, man. Right. We talk about it. A lot. Yeah, I could just picture that MTV. Oh my gosh. And then, boom, sorry. At the bottom, the lines, the record company. Yeah, such an iconic oh, logo. So, it was so fun. Mm -hmm. um, okay, MTV, not even a hesitation. Not even a hesitation. Here we go. Adam Sandler or Jim Carrey? Oh, Sandler, oh. man, he had more fun. I know Carrey's funnier, but Sandler literally looked like he was having more fun. Dude, he got to do those fucking ridiculous shit with Bob Barker. Come on. <laughs> Bob Barker man, beat there's the no fucking shit way. Out of him. <laughs> Uh -huh. Price is wrong, Bob. Come on, man. I gotta, be fucking, I gotta pick Sandler. Yeah. And I've seen that too many times. There's one inconsistency. How is he laying on his back, grabs down Sandler, and then the next clip when he gets choked, the arm's all the way up? I'm sorry, but that's the one cut since it was I was elevation. Kid, was, huh. he just sprung up. He was, he <laughs> you know what so what I mean? <laughs> Little thin microphone <laughs> giving spade, spade or neuter questions. I love that movie. Yes, Adam Sandler's my favorite person ever. Love Jim Carrey, though. Yeah. Great. Are you ready? Oh, do we change this? I'm going to change it. Okay. Full house or family matters. You were also not a little child in the 90s. So right. you might have not have been watching. I would have gone with family matters. Okay, here we go. Yeah. We could just end that one with, I've seen Urkel. Because <laughs> you, weren't, you yeah. weren't, you were making pipes. Yes, so I was. So you probably weren't watching Full House. No, okay. I know Full Come on, everyone knows Urkel, man. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Forrest Gump, Pulp Fiction, uh -huh. and it's the 90s. Pulp Fiction, man, that's so much more fun and fucking bam, bro. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No Pulp Fiction, that was that's a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's his favorite movie of all time. You seem yeah. to me like somebody that would love Pulp Fiction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I more than than a a, a runner story, uh, <laughs> <laughs> an athletic <laughs> war story. Yeah. No, yeah. no, no, no. Pulp Fiction all the way, man. Pulp like, Fiction's great, man. Yeah, it's good. I just recently watched it again. <laughs> My, what was my mom let me do watch that at five years old? Crank caller, crank caller. <laughs> crank caller, crank caller. Who is this? You know who that guy is? That's Rocky Dennison. Oh, really? From Mask? Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. That's him, the heroin dealer. I didn't know that. Same guy. Holy Crazy, shit. Crazy, huh? Yeah. Same dude from Mask with Cher. The guy with the deformity. That's the same dude. I don't know. I was, I, That's I, a good movie. Right. It's a good movie. I know yeah, you've yeah. seen Mask. I know it's a good movie. Um, Mario or Donkey Kong? Mario, man, it's gotta be Mario. It's gotta be Mario. It's gotta be Mario. Same. It's just too iconic. I it's feel. too iconic. Donkey Kong's fun, but yeah, it, yeah we it, had one Donkey Kong person. Mm -hmm. Who was it? Was it Adam Twenty Two? Might have been. Might have been. He Adam was 22. just fucking with you, man. <laughs> Adam he was, was I think he, with you. If, if it was him, I remember who it was, but it was a serious. It was a serious. Uh -huh. like, nah, Donkey Kong. Uh -huh. But Adam, he might have played a lot of Donkey Kong back when he was might in New York. Been. It had yeah. to, it had to have been something. I don't know. But I remember I'll ask asked him that. I'm gonna ask that question. So you said twenty something years vegan. This is before, and we ask everybody this. It's for me, it's more based on who, what kind of kid you were, but you weren't a kid. <laughs> McDonald's or Burger King, but you didn't care about that stuff, especially if you're in the... Well, yeah, but in, in the 90s, I would have cared. I would have been more for McDonald's because for some reason, my, my mom hated McDonald's, so we never get it. Oh, you have a story behind it. Yeah, yeah. And then finally, there was this one place down like near us in New York that was some fucked up McDonald's that was so fucked up that they had to take the M, off, have the M down. There was still McDonald's, but it didn't have the M on it. This McDonald's. Yeah, it was like McDonald's, man. It really was. And so I remember we'd go there and we'd get, you'd get the McDonald's, but it wasn't McDonald's. Then it became McDonald's again. But like, <laughs> what the fuck? I don't know, man. Some McDonald's situation. <laughs> it, was, it really was. This McDonald's. really was some coming to America it stuff. It was just things. like that. But, it was, but he at least ran his restaurant clean. I remember ours lost its M. The story was because they were like they weren't cleaning up the rats or something. Hey, man, our McDonald's is so bad. They took our M away. <laughs> wow. I thought Merced was fucking bad. Just Ursed right now. Yeah, no, Queens was a little different. Yeah. 
Oh, and it was in Queens also? Yeah, it was in Queens. Oh, my God. Come, okay. But okay. it isn't really, it's on the border of Hempstead and Queens. So it isn't like the deep and freaking, I know where you're going right now, coming to America. I've never been to New York, so that's what I imagine just. When you get ah. further out into Queens, it's basically like Long Island, which means it's more spread out. It isn't as, as on top urbanized. Of each other. Yeah, it isn't as urbanized as, as like in coming to America, which has been more like central buildings Queens. and stuff. Yeah. yeah. That was okay. closer to the city. Gotcha, gotcha. So my next one, ready? Michael Jordan or Michael Jackson? Jordan, dude. Yeah, that was quick. Jordan, Jordan. hell yeah, man. Have you ever seen him play live? of all time. You ever seen him play basketball live? Yeah. You have? Well, on TV. Oh, I was okay. in person. I was no, like, not person. It's just, I've never, I don't think we've met a person yet or asked a person yet that goes, I've seen that full play. No, live. I did not see him play live. Not yet. We'll get we'll get there one day. Someone's yeah. going to be like, yeah. It's not on TV, though. Hell yeah. I've only seen one game on TV play for the Wizards. That's how young I was when he was like, I'm done. And I remember he went to play baseball. And yeah, it didn't work Yo, out. Oh, Space Jam, I'm with it. Uh, I was a kid. But, uh, Oh, I guess this one we gotta we gotta come up with a better one. It's always in the '90s for me. It's it's it was always the orange soda or Nesquik. Were you the we gotta change the Sunny Delight or Nesquik? Remember the little yeah, rabbit? But for me, it was Nesquik. Oh, you really did fuck yeah, with it fucking Nesquik. Oh, okay, strong. Oh, yeah, dude. Strong. I get a whole fucking tub of that for just a couple bucks, and then no matter how messed up, I, I could even eat. I would eat that shit plain. The powder. Did you? Oh, you it fucking was so, so bad. good. He always coughed a little. Yeah, yeah, you did. What he got? <laughs> yeah, you yeah, always coughed Joe, a little Joe. bit. But the Nesquik was the shit, dude. That was fucking. That's total like smoker candy. Man. I'm so excited that you actually. I didn't think you, but this is pre. Yeah, the metal thing. You get the top off of it, the whole thing. Of course, man. Come on. Yeah. I've been smoking for a long time. When I got older, that was my weed can. Oh, when I got I older. That. So what it would make everything taste like Nesquik. Oh no, I'd clean it. Yeah, right. My friend my friend Rick <laughs> to this day buries his weed. Oh, you know what? Let me just stop. Don't tell him. He's like a fifty year old man. He's a grown man. He's a grown man. But uh yeah, prank call, exactly. Okay, so thank you very much. That was uh who were you in the nineties? I think that was great. I'm glad you had such distinct answers. Most people go, I guess. You knew what you wanted. Of course. You knew. Okay, okay. And my last question, my last thing to end this, and before I do, thank you for being here. This has been fun. Yeah. This has been fun. I don't even know how long we've been here, but this has been a fun episode. (laughs) Thank you, thank you. That joint actually did make me feel different. Good. That was awesome. Yeah, I noticed. It gave you energy. Yeah, it woke me up. You're up. Yeah, it was just fucking lovely. I gotta start putting some different, I guess. I'm always looking for things like that because you see me. You know, my energy is, I'm trying to bring it. I need to. And then down, of course, at night, put me to bed, please. Mm -hmm. But during the day, if I'm going to go film or something, I'm going to smoke. I got to find something that I can smoke that's not going to put me to bed. Yeah. And no one wants to see me do a video from bed. Yeah. That wouldn't be good at all. I got you. Let me show you this new product. No, no, no. You want me alive and awake, and I want to be that way. And then when you've gotten all that energy out, then you crash the fuck out and do it again the next day. I got to try. I got to try. I smoke the same thing all day, every day. No change. I never do that. That's why I gotta change. I have tried. This helped me a lot. I like that. I like the feeling it gave me. Yeah, I'll get you a lot more of it. I am uh, surprised. I gotta be honest because I told you off camera. I don't like lemon. Yeah. So it's good. Okay. Here's my question. Ready? Okay. Yeah, I'm ready. We came in with this, and I said, I, I and a lot of people, other people, would think of it more of think of you more as the Willy Wonka factory of smoking products. Okay. You are a personality behind the product. That's how I see it. Right. Mm-hmm. And I put this this way when I was writing up a question. I'm like, huh, how am I going to word this? Are you actively or is it ever a thought in your brain to find a Charlie and Grandpa to take over all your stuff so you don't have to do it anymore? Oh, yeah, all the time. Yeah? Yeah, yeah all the time. All the time, man. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love what I'm doing. But, like, someone's got to run the shit and I can't sell it. That's not an option. There are people out there that tried to buy it before a big tobacco uh, Company, a very large tobacco company, tried to buy me, and that was a turning point in my life when I realized that I couldn't sell to them. I thought about all the Alcoyanos, I thought about all the history, all my people, all my my family, everybody, and how hurt it would. I'd be the pain I'd be sending upon them because when that guy buys it, it's over, man, for all of them. Eventually, they all become his little servants, and it's not going to be good. It's not going to be good, and there was no way I could do it. There's not enough money that, that exists in this planet to get mm-hmm. me to do that. So it can't. So that went out. Um, instead, because if you, when you love your people, you can't sell them. You can't. You know. Yeah. So that's gone. So the only realistic way out for me, because eventually I'm going to be gone, is either my incredibly smart, beautiful, amazing daughter steps up and does this, which would be amazing, or someone else does. I don't know if she has any interest in this whatsoever. She might not. 
And then, okay, what happens? What happens, yeah. man? You know, you got to find someone to take it over. You got to find Charlie. Grandpa's awesome. I'll hang out with him all the time. But you got to find your Charlie so that you can go do, go relax and go spend some time. There's some mornings I just want to get up and smoke and go back to fuck to bed. And I love doing that sometimes. I'd like to do a little more of that. A lot more of it, actually. I really would. I want to go back to Ethiopia more. My goal, like when I travel places now, is I, I want to be there for, for as long as possible. So when I go to Alcoy, I want to be there for ideally two months. Just stay. I know where I want to eat. I know I want to get immersed more in the culture. I want to connect deeper. I want to be there, be there. Not as a tourist. Not as someone who's in there for a little bit and leaves. I want to be like the whole fucking town to know my little details. You know what I mean? Yeah. I want to be part of the community for real. Everywhere I go, I like. I want it to be like that. So I'll tell you what. So when I was really starting to travel more, starting to hit around all the different places and seeing some incredible spots, I realized, oh man, I wish I could cut off my pinky for real and grow another Josh and leave him here. <laughs> yeah. I could leave him as an expat in the Philippines and he could live an incredible life here. He would have such impact and such, he would live such an amazing life if I just could leave a Josh here in the Philippines, in Bali, another Josh. He could live here his whole life. The impact he would have on the, we have an, an orphanage that we're one of the primary sponsors of. The impact he would have, the good he could do. In Ethiopia, let me give off another finger for there. Of course, that Josh, that's a really important Josh, man. That Josh has got, has some serious work to do. And he could do some incredible stuff with his life. Anywhere I've been, even in Russia, Cut off my thumb. Leave a, leave a Josh in Russia. Live that expat life, Josh. Wow. I don't know what that would be like. In Spain, of course. Everywhere. I want to leave a Josh. And then at the end of my life, bring everyone together and share all the knowledge and all those lives together and feel them all as one. That was like a weird, fucked up dream I had. <laughs> <laughs> it would just be... Because there's so that much... so weird, fucked up dream. <laughs> it's true, man. It was so inspiring. It was just weird, fucked up dream. I love it. It's because it's coming from here. Yeah, I got you. It's um, when I realized like how much beauty at, there is to be lived. When I re when you're there in a place and you realize like, oh my God, imagine if you lived here. Imagine if you stayed. When you imagine it, what that would be like. Mm -hmm. And there's so many places throughout this entire planet that are just like that. And n living any one of those lives would be magical and special and incredible in its own way. And then you're back here living the life that you're actually living. And you, so many roads, man. So many incredible roads. And I've seen them all in a way. I want everyone to see that. Because if you can feel that, you realize there is so much more to be lived. And hopefully this inspires you to live it. You can go live one of those lives that I was unable to. Because they're incredible, man. They're journeys. And that would be amazing. Fucking Josh. <laughs> Josh, always making me think deep and insightful in a good way. Fuck, man, I just thought of so much stuff right now when you were talking. <laughs> like what? Of places I've never seen. Yeah. I was just flashing through my head of things I've seen on and your not story. not just seeing them with a the tourist, though. Yeah, you want being there. It's live a different it. place. It's a live different. Live it. Yeah, you've done enough. It's your time to go do that. I get. Yeah. I see exactly what you're saying. If you I can just find Charlie. Hopefully that motherfucker's watching right now. I wish. I wish. So you are actively looking for that person to hand it yeah. down to. Got to let the genie out of the bottle sometimes. Let me go. Oh, my God. <laughs> Josh, the things you say, man, that was the most relatable shit I've ever heard. I was thought of that was Robin Williams. Really? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, everybody just got emotional at home. Like, oh, I love yeah. Robin Williams. Man, that was amazing. That's really, all right. For That's everyone out there. You are actively looking to, to step away and live your life and do different things. That would free up so much of your life to yeah. do more of things you were saying, like with the, with the giving, raw giving and all that. All that. I mean, 24-7. Yeah. Now, that, now that's your life. Great goal to have. Super good goal to have. That's the goal. You want to relax a little bit and also help 100 times more. 100 times more at least. Yeah, really make that impact. I mean, like... Yeah, like where you're, it's it's at that level of superhero status, you know, where you got the team, the crack team, where we're not just going to fix it, we're going to fix it right, we're going to make sure it's protected this time. Like, you ain't getting in here, man. No fucking way. You're like, wow, okay. Great goal to have. Yeah. Love it. 
lives Tony Stark for real. Yo, you know what I mean? <laughs> get out of here. I've heard people go, this fool's like Robert Downey Jr. I'm like, he kind of does look like Robert. I never thought about <laughs> it. You're going to live Tony Stark life? Oh, imagine, just imagine that, though. If you did that in a way of positivity and giving back, where it was like you didn't just go into help, you went into help. Yeah. Like, and you did it. It was like oh, unstoppable. That would be amazing. Man, that's Wouldn't a real it? superhero life. It's as close as you're going to yeah. get to it, man. Yeah. Great goals to have. I love that. Before we get out of here, can you tell me something? What is the best way for people to help everything you're doing? Okay. Well, I've got lots of good ways. At the moment, we're actually doing a giving back NFT. Really? The, I posted about it before. Um, I think it's uh, raw NFT. I got to find the, I'll give you the link. Yeah. But we're doing this NFT that really, I make nothing from it. It's for my side. It's all giving back. So I've got that. We have raw so giving. The proceeds go straight to yeah, the. Our rugby. side of the proceeds. Because of course there's some fees on the thing that we don't get. But our, I, I get nothing. Like me and my, my whole fam get nothing from this. This is just to give back, to do more wells and to do more things that need to be done in Ethiopia. I'm trying to do a bigger project to make up for the one that I lost. Gotcha. So, which I'm going to do one way or another. It will be done. It will be done right. Uh, so there's that. At rawgiving.com, this is kind of an interesting thing that's metamorphosized into something more than it was really ever, I ever thought it would be. It's a website where people go, and let's say you wanted to buy this three tree case or this grinder. When you buy it, you're not really buying it. You're making a donation directly to, on this case, it's water is life, or the wine, wine to water. It goes The money goes directly to them, all of what you did. So if you're paying $5 plus $5 for shipping, 10 bucks for this, the 10 bucks goes directly to them. And then we just turn around and send this to you for free. So I get nothing, we never handle the money. And I do this for a reason. Um, and so we just, here, take the grinder. Thank you so much for making that donation. It's just a thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm doing it like that because I'm trying to get the receiver of this to get the feeling that I have when I first started really giving back. It's this feeling of giving, this feeling of realizing that you're actually making a difference. This Because it's part of our humanity. It feels good to give back to people. It feels good to help somebody. You see somebody starving on the corner and you show up with food and help them. You're doing it because of, not just to help that person, because it gives you a good feeling. It's programmed into our DNA to do this. You just got to feel that a little more. It's addictive, you know? And I want to share that feeling with you so that you'll do more of it in your own life so that as you become more successful, if somebody is sitting here and they've listened this freaking far into this podcast of two dudes smoking and rambling for hours, then I can tell you that's a really special person to begin with. That's someone who is truly trying to make it. They're listening to the words that you and I are saying because they're trying to get advice, because they're trying to elevate themselves and bring themselves to a better place. There's no one else who's going to listen this far unless you're really at that level. There's no one else. So with all that being said, the odds of you making it, especially after listening to you and me ramble for this long, is now higher. And if you make it, and when you do, because you must, you have to give back for real. That's the deal. Better than I've ever done. Higher percentages. Come on, it feels good to do it. Find ways. And it's not, ideally, it's not in the way that is the closest to you. It's not by helping out your best friend with a, with a mortgage payment. Instead, it's by helping somebody you know nothing about who speaks a different language than you and living in a faraway land because it's cheaper to save his life for a hundred bucks than it is to help your friend with something else. And you realize, as much as I want to help my friend, which is awesome, maybe I'll do both. The most important thing is saving that life. Let me do that first, and then I'll help you too. We'll get it all done somehow. But it's this beautiful feeling of giving, and I want to share it so that people do it more. I hope it works, but it's what we're trying to do. And that's all at rawgiving.com. At rawgiving.com. You got some good karma coming, boy. Uh, I, I was waiting for Marty. I was waiting for a line from Marty. Marty drops these perfect lines in here in these silence moments. That's all I was I'm looking for. Of. It's a huge, giant wave that's been building up for so long. Like that's what the universe likes. Yeah, it does. It really yeah, does. It just Isn't trickles down. It just trickles to the next person. Mm -hmm. The does. next person. And what I believe is, every time you get a gift, like when you something amazing happens and you have a huge success, you pause for a moment and you listen because if you just listen a little bit, with that gift comes a request, and if you honor the request, if you somehow end up, 
for me it was when the truck drove through, and this was not a place I was meant to be, the Sisters of Mother Teresa's main hospital in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. The gates open up, and I pull in and realize, oh, fuck. This, this situation is bad, bad. And you, then as it goes on and you learn how bad it is, you realize that you have the ability to help in a way that no one else can. And sure, there were other people that were supposed to. And you can go down that path and blame it on them. Well, they were supposed to help and they were supposed to help. But in the end, you could help these people, man. And then you do it. And you actually do it. Like, really do it. Not just, uh, no. Now you've honored the universe's request and you'll receive an even bigger gift. And with that bigger gift might come another request. And that's okay. Always honor it. You get, you get back, you receive more. It really goes like this. This energetic wave you were talking about, it's all real, man. Mm -hmm. Energy is the real thing. The stars are emitting it. You and I are burning it right now as we sit here. It's the way it is. That light bulb is emitting it too. It's real. It comes and ebbs and flows, man. It's like the waves on an ocean. Just listen to it a little bit more. And then hopefully we'll all do better. Let's go. There's another trailer moment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I wanted the slow clap. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where's that one? Yeah. Where's that on the soundboard, Marty? The slow clap. <laughs> yeah. Josh, you're dropping knowledge on here. I love it. I hope everyone out here is absorbing this. Because I'm sitting here and just, I love this. Right on. This is what the I show is all this. about. And how many times I told you, like, Josh, it's just, it's just different. Like, there's something. I don't know what it is. Yeah. Something that's why you've been so successful, though. I think you attract all this good energy and positivity, and it just comes back, but you also give it back like the request thing. Yeah, of course, you can't just sit here and go, No, nah, it's mine. I hate it. That's wrong. No, no, you, can't, we, you can't do that. We shit. are doing too much of that lately, and we need to do less of that as a people. As a people, all of us, yeah. we all need to. I do it too. We all fall victim to this. Mm -hmm. It's this feeling you get of like, Well, what if I need it later? How can I give this away? I, I only have so much of it, and if. If I give it this away, what if I need it? It's this feeling. And you, you just let go anyway. You're like, well, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, if, you, if you can help, man, fucking help. Yeah. So rawgiving.com, is there anything else? Uh, I mean, it's rawauthentic.com. Yeah, for our, for, but they already know who. I, I now, you, you know, hopefully the products. I think we've gotten them big enough where they're available in most spots. Oh, it's, it's every... Head shop I've ever walked into in my yeah. entire existence. Here it is. Yeah. yeah. Just go to the head shop, guys. And some of it, the stuff I don't make that much of, yeah, but and it's some on purpose. I want to get better the next time, better and better yeah, and better. Some people don't have head shops in their spot. Okay. So it's rawauthentic. Yeah, then you go to rawauthentic.com. That's at least from there you can find out where to get where to get anything. And what where what places sell it? Not, yeah, not? there's some great places online. We don't okay. sell direct. We just do yeah, it's not direct consumer. Yeah, we don't. Do but that. at least it's the links there. So for everyone asking, go ahead and check that out. Yeah, there's some great spot and and. Hopefully, we've helped you enjoy your smoke a little more than before. Well, while I'm trying to make everybody laugh in all these stories and videos, I'm always smoking raws. <laughs> so thank you for helping me. Thank you, guys. Right it's weird, the little trickle-down effect that, uh, that's happening right now. He's an enabler. Uh, he's an enabler. <laughs> <laughs> Great. I'll keep that one. That's, that's my quote, huh? That's what I get. <laughs> Josh, on Instagram, on everything, it's rock and roll. R-A-W-K. R-A-W-K-A-N-D-R-O-L-L. -L. That's on Instagram. Rock with a W in the middle, yeah. guys. Rock. 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 And rock. Okay. Man, you've been here for a very long time. Thank you for sitting. Thank you for changing your flight so you can come hang out with us. Yeah, I appreciate that important. a lot. Thank you very much. You're People have been asking nonstop, and I hope you guys have... I, this is a long episode. We went... I'm, I'm going to say it's been. over two and a half that. hours at least. Yeah. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I know you guys are still sitting here in the premiere. We, we premiered these live and we sit in the chat and stuff. So we get to talk to people as it's happening. It's wow. so awesome. That's awesome. It is very fun. So peop, I know everybody's going to be very excited. Josh, thank you so much for being here and spreading this positivity on this damn channel. You're welcome. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me, sir. Appreciate Congratulations. you. Congratulations. Thank you. I am so thank fucking you. proud of you, honestly, thank you, man. man. I really am. I appreciate it. It's been a, I, I've known you, I think, almost this whole time. Yeah. So, thank you. Thank you for all the advice and everything. Appreciate you, dude. Appreciate you, too. Josh, thank you so much. Keep killing it, man. I, I just want to see you hit the freaking moon. Thank you, dude. Uh, it's coming. We're going <laughs> to go. We're going as hard as we can. This is a good year. I'm excited. Guys, this has been the, the Josh Kesselman episode. I don't Let's know how, how long we've been here. 
10 hours. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Marty, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, here. sir. This was a great episode. Very inspirational and lots of gems for everybody. Thank you. Yes. Lots of, lots of them. I, mm. Our editor, our Cole, get ready for some clips. A lot of clips coming out of this one. There's so much. And like you said, I don't want to get anything negative. And it's the best thing anybody could do. Like, yo, no, no. Why even talk about it? Let's stay on the positives. Yeah. You said that like five times and I watch you revert it's great. I do it to myself. I yeah, yeah. I, I do it to myself. You know what? Yeah. I don't care. Let's move on. <laughs> yeah. Who cares? I, I try to do that as much I've as I can. I've seen you do it incredibly as Instagram would take down your shit. And I would talk to you about it. And the things that were coming out of your mouth blew my mind, man. Try. You were so good about it. I've never seen another human being do as well as you did with it. it you turned it right into positivity and inspired the shit out of oh, me. No I got to tell you honestly, I couldn't believe how well you did with that. Anyone else would have been taken down except for you. Thank I would have been taken down and you oh. were not. You didn't let it stop you at the all. The day after oh. they deleted his YouTube, the day we were supposed to hit a million subscribers. Yeah, I remember that. That next morning, he's like, it's a fuck it, fuck you. Right. Back fuck on it anyway. Get on it again. Yeah. I saw. Love that. It was just inspirational to me. It's like whenever, when, when they come at me, I think this, I think of you. <sighs> yeah. One day, one day we're going to be talking about a whole different part of this subject. Going, remember when that used to happen? <laughs> oh, it's going to be awesome. <laughs> one day we're going to be left alone. Because you guys got to remember, even you get shadow man. Oh, yeah. Even Josh. They threaten to take down my account all the time. It's just, they just it's frowned upon. And until it is, we'll still be here. And we'll always remember, this episode right here, just come back and watch it. If you're starting a business, if you're in a hard time in life, if you're in a rough patch, if you're financially fucking up, Come watch this and remember, like I said to my 10 year old self, it'll get better. Just stick it with it and you'll be okay. Thank you so much for doing this, man. Thank you. Man. Thank you so much for hanging out, guys. This has been the Josh Kessman episode. This is Marty O'Neill. This is Josh. Everybody at Raw, thank you guys so much for creating my favorite paper in the world. Uh, thank you guys so much. This has been the Dope as Usual podcast. Have a dope ass day. Right yeah. That's a good episode, <laughs> man. Yo, I really hope people absorb a lot of things you said.